And we are live. The Hangout is up. Let's, we're live, guys. Let me just make sure everything is queued up so we can answer some questions here. Let me mute that. Cool. And boom. Okay, cool. How's everyone doing today? I'm super excited to do this uh, YouTube live hangout with you guys. It's been a while since I've done one. I've done one. And this should be a lot of fun to do once again. So um, let's first talk about spring break, OK? So um, where is he? Hi, hi. Should be popping up for some of you guys, most of you, hopefully, soon. Um, if you're jumping into the live stream now, just hit the like button. Let me know that you are excited, too. And hopefully, I get to your question. Um, I want to say thank you guys so much for joining me here on my spring break live stream. Is the audio good? Audio is good for everyone. Let me know in the comments. Um, gonna wait a bit to my arrive at my house. No problem, David. Two times. Hello, everyone. Dylan, how's it going? Uh, Master Ma uh, Master MMO, Mix Guy, awesome. Six nine eight Floyd, good to see you again, man. Can you bring your girlfriend on right now? She's relaxing. I promise I'll have her on eventually. Don't worry, guys. She'll be on here at some point. But let's talk about spring break for a second. Some of you guys already had your spring break. Some of you have said you had it in the end of March. Some are having it now. Some had it last week. Spring break is a time that's not really set in stone like Christmas or Halloween or Valentine's Day. But generally, spring break represents more a time. And it's the time when we are transitioning into spring, right? You get off a break because it's the beginning of a new season. Everyone needs time to refresh and kind of reboot. And that's exactly what I want to talk about now. You know, some of you guys have already had your vacation, some have not, but this should be your time. Hopefully, we can address this in the Q in the Q&A here. This is your time to ask questions, to get answers, and to kind of reboot. Well, that's what I want you guys to kind of focus on today. I want you to focus on kind of rebooting the way that you do things. Maybe you've been trying to ask out your crush and it hasn't been working out. Let's reboot that. Let's figure out a new way to do it. Maybe you've just been failing in schoolwork and you haven't really been doing as well as you wanted to. Let's reboot that. Let's figure out a good strategy for you guys to excel. Whatever your challenge is, whatever you're facing, or whatever you want to talk about, it's open game here. You can ask anything you want. I'm going to be here for the next two hours answering questions. So I'm going to jump into chat now. Let's scroll up. I know Damian Gray, he was the first one in here. First comment, all bow beneath me. <laughs> uh, first one in here, he asked the question, very straightforward one. Josh, what made you start this question? But uh, what made you start feeling uh, public to share stories? So I think that's a great question. Since we're rebooting everything, let's start from the beginning here. Um, what I want to say is that uh, the reason why I started sharing stories and sharing my life experiences here on YouTube is because um, it's one thing to kind of give advice. And it's another thing, sorry, just resizing stuff. It's one thing to give advice, but it's totally another thing to kind of be open and honest about yourself here, you know? So. I felt it was so appropriate or important for me to kind of share a little bit about myself, to share my own experiences. Recently, if you guys have seen my most recent story that I shared, which was a four-part series of how I got together with my second girlfriend, what our experience was like dating, and why we broke up. That was something I felt was very personal and deep and I wanted to share with you guys so that you guys can understand what my experience was with dating. And even with asking someone out, choosing between two girls, that was my whole scenario when I was dating uh, that girl. So I know a lot of you guys have questions and um, that's just something I wanted to address. I wanted to show you guys that, hey, I'm willing to open up and be honest here because that's what this is about. I've had so many of you guys message me, reach out to me, send me messages and comments, sharing your personal stories. And I only think it's fair that I share mine back with you, you know, so you guys know where I'm coming from as well. Um, how's everyone doing? I see new people rolling in. Carl Gilman, what's up? William Spayer, how's it going? Damien Gray, he was first. Uh, Damien Gray, since you were first, I'm giving you the rights of being a moderator. So Damien Gray, I'm putting you in charge to help me kind of moderate. Make sure no one's kind of saying crazy things or really bad things. I trust your judgment here. Um, I want to kind of just get through questions and let's make moves. Let's do this. So um, Ginger, Ginger Jimmy Gaming says, we don't have spring break in England. So I think spring break is uh, spring break is generally a US thing. I'm not sure if it's also in Canada, but generally a US thing. So either way, this is just an open hangout. And like I said, the whole purpose is to kind of think about the things that you're struggling with and reboot them. We're going to work on that together here. 
So Scrappy Dude says he has a big question. So I'm scrolling through the comments here. Let's see what's going on. Hi from England. Your mouth is it matching your audio. Hmm. Is anyone else seeing that problem? It's possible that the Wi-Fi is not connecting right. So Jeb Bush. Jeb Bush, good to see you again, man. Uh, girl likes me but doesn't want a relationship. Okay, so let's start with that. Um, you're in a situation where there's a girl you know that likes you uh, but she doesn't want a relationship, right? So what do you do with that? I think that's a really good question. And I think um, the best kind of answer I can give you for that is to really think about whether or not a relationship is the right thing you should be focusing on with that girl. So if she does like you and she does want to get to know you better, um, maybe instead of focusing on building a relationship, it's way more important to build a solid friendship with her or even just to start dating. Now, what I consider dating is spending time getting to know a person one-on-one, -on -one, talking to them every so often, maybe hanging out after school once in a while. Uh, that, I think, is, is the key to really discover if you two connect well. Sometimes people are not willing to just jump into a relationship. You know, the idea of calling someone your boyfriend or girlfriend when you don't really know them that well, even though you like them, can be kind of scary. So Jeb, it sounds like she ju just needs some time to get to know you better. That is what I think you should focus on. So let's see, Anvil Robles, leaving light soul vlogs. Good to see you, man. Hey, Josh, I talked to that girl. She just wants to hang out in the morning at school because she doesn't come home with hanging out of school. That's okay, man. I mean, it's it's not, I think, the right, the exact thing you were looking for, but everything is small steps. You know, if a girl is not comfortable hanging out one on one alone, that's okay in the beginning. You know, take some time to get to know her. You really, you want to kind of build a foundation with the person that you like to show them that, hey, it's okay hanging out with me. We can hang out, we can get to know each other. Everything is cool. That's what you want to set as the foundation. Chorus says, Josh, there's this one girl I really like, but we never talk to each other. She's a friend of one of my friends. What should I do? Okay, Korsh. So here's what I would recommend there. Um, this is a girl you like, but you never talk to her. So, I mean, I think, you know, one of the more, more obvious things there is that you're going to have to find a way to start talking to her, right? The question is how? Now, she's friends with one of your friends, and I think that could be your in right there. Now, here's what a lot of people tend to do. A lot of people tend to um, say, well, my friend knows my crush, my friend should just go talk to her and that's it. My friend should tell her that I like her or my friend should ask her out for me or ask for her phone number. It's easier for us to kind of send our friends off to go do stuff rather than us actually doing it. If your friend already knows your crush or someone you like or someone you want to get to know, don't have your friend do those things for you. Instead, have your friend bring your crush over to you. And the best way to do that is this. So, if your friend is close to them, you can always ask your friend to start talking to them and to mention you in conversation. Oh, by the way, do you know so-and-so? Um, come on, let's go talk to him. Let's, I, I have a question I wanna ask you to, or, oh, he has a really good opinion on, on that topic that we're talking about. Have your friend bring up conversations. I haven't done a video on this yet. It's gonna come soon about being a good wingman, but um, have your friend bring up conversations with your crush that they can then bring you into. So if your friend is like uh, to your crush, hey, what do you think about um, the, um, what's a new movie that came out? Can't think of a new movie that came out. What do you think about wrestling or sports? Uh, and let's say your crush just happens to like sports. Um, you can always say, oh, cool. My friend really, really loves that team or loves this sport too. We should bring him in to talk as well. You know, so try to have your friend segue you into the conversation so that there can now be the three of you talking. And then eventually when you and your crush click, your friend can be like, oh, I'm going to go over there and go do things, you know, and, and walk away. So that would be a good wingman way to kind of have your friend bring you closer to your crush and kind of exit the scene. So let's see. Um, by the way, guys, I know you're, you're dropping comments in there. Um, I'm answering the comments kind of as I go down the chat. So I'm not letting the chat scroll. I'm kind of stopping and answering one by one. If you have a question that you definitely, definitely want me to see and you do not want it to get missed, I think that's what the super chat function is for. If you use the super chat function, you can definitely have something ping on, on the screen and then I'll definitely spend time on it. I totally won't miss it. So if you really, really have a question you need my answer for, check out the super chat function, which is the little dollar sign box thing on the chat window. Um, also, if this is your first time viewing and you haven't already, turn on notifications. Click on the little bell icon um, where my channel is. And what that's gonna do is kind of just notify you, let you know every time I do a live stream like this, every time I put out a new video, so you can always be up to date and always be learning how to be your best self. Okay, so William Spire says, um, 
I need help, I wanna ask this girl out, but I don't think she will like me. So William, it sounds like there's that fear, the fear of getting rejected, the fear of feeling that you're, like you're not good enough, feeling like she won't accept you for who you are. And I know, I know how it is, man. It, it, it's common to feel that way. But at the end of the day, what's important is to put yourself out there and, out there and to learn. You know, like, I truly, truly believe everyone is special just the way they are, right? We all have our own unique qualities, our unique abilities. We all have our fun characteristics. Um, and, and that's amazing. But sometimes our characteristics don't always mesh well with someone else's. And the only way to really know that is to talk to them, get to know them, spend time around them. So I think that's what you should focus on. Uh, I know you're afraid of her not liking you or maybe just rejecting you. But at the end of the day, um, it's not until you talk to her, it's not until you see if you two overlap in that way that you'll start to feel like, hey, okay, we can really get along. Or, hey, actually, I just think she's a pretty girl, but she's really not the right girl for me. So, let's see. Oh, I think I'm missing stuff in the chat. How do I, there's no way to stop the chat. It just keeps rolling, rolling, rolling. Okay, so I'm just gonna try to scroll up as early as I can and do this. Sorry about that, guys. Let's see. So I've been busy lately. I've uh, been missing out on modding. No problem, Beast Player. Um, so let's see. You're the real man, Josh. Lights of Vlogs. Thank you, dude. I appreciate it. And thank you, man, for, for being so active. You know, you're on Snapchat. You're on Instagram. We talk on YouTube here. Um, guys, I really appreciate people who are really active in the community. It's awesome to know that there are people that are just, you know, learning things and trying them out. And I think that's the key of it all. You know, like the last thing I want any of you guys to be is a keyboard warrior, right? And what a keyboard warrior is, is a person who just sits there and just consumes knowledge, consumes, 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 but never acts on it. You know, it's easier for them to kind of just uh, become a knowledge junkie in a way. They just like to read, like to learn, and, and, and all they do is kind of consume, but they're never actively doing things, testing it, seeing what works. And Lights of Vlogs, I, I believe in you, man. I, I think think you have the, the, the skills and the tenacity to, to put things into play. Okay. Um, yeah, your mouth is matching your, your my, my voice, I guess, is matching my mouth. So I apologize if it's going slow for anyone. I don't know why, but I hope not. Um, let's see. Uh, nerd guy, uh, I think I have a... Okay, so the nine the nine tails fox says, nerd guy, same thing. I have a girl that I really like, but she has a boyfriend. So if you're in a situation where there's a person you like, but they have a boyfriend, uh, I know that can suck, right? It's a sucky feeling. It's like, ah, what do you do? You don't want to interfere, right? I'm a firm believer in not interfering in other people's relationships. But what I would really recommend in that situation is to move on, right? That's the best thing that you can do harping on or trying to find a way to insert yourself into someone else's relationship isn't cool. You know, imagine if you were going out with that person. Would you want someone else to try to break you guys up just so that they can get with the person you're dating? It's not a cool thing. It's not a matter of respect. So, um, let's see. The ledge says, my crush is Mexican and I think it would be cool to ask her out in Spanish. What do you think? By the way, she already knows I like her because my friend told her in the DMs. Okay, cool. So if you think asking her out in Spanish would be something that's cool, I would say go for it. You know, um, learn how to say that in Spanish. That might be something that might impress her. So definitely try that out. Now, you said she's a, she already knows that you like her, right? A lot of times people think that just because your crush knows that you like her, it's make or break now. Like, uh-oh, what do I do? They know I like them. I think if if your crush already knows that you like them, that's even that that makes it even more important for you to go forward and be confident in talking to your crush, right? So what I would really recommend doing is when you ask out your crush in Spanish, and if she says, "Oh, I already know that you like me," just be confident about it. Just say, "Yeah, I like you. I'm not afraid that I'm not afraid to say that. So what? I like you, and I want to ask you out." If you deliver it in that way, if you deliver it in a confident way to let her know that you're not embarrassed by the fact of her knowing that, you know, she's going to be super impressed by that. Let's see. Damien Gray says, Josh, do you feel more boys watch this channel than girls? Um, I totally think more boys watch this than girls. That's not to discredit the, the females or the girls that watch this. 
I love the girls that watch this and, and they leave awesome comments. And I talk to some of you guys as well at Instagram and Snapchat. Um, but it seems to be very male heavy and that's okay. I mean, anyone is open to watch the channel, boys, girls, trans, anyone in between. Um, you know, the channel's all about learning to be your best self, but I think it skews heavily towards boys a lot. And I think a big reason is because I myself am, am a boy and that's probably what it is. Um, based on the YouTube analytics, it's, I think it's like 80% boys, 20% girls. So, um, so it seems like I'm missing some of the comments. It, the chat isn't letting me scroll up that much. So I'm just going to try to grab them while I can. Um, this is annoying. I can't, so I can't pause the chat. So I'm just going to try to grab the questions while I can. I apologize guys. Um, just a quick thing. If, um, I don't get to your question today, right? Like I said, if you really need to, an you need me to answer it in this moment, the super chat function is there. Uh, if I don't get to your question, you guys can always follow me on Instagram or Snapchat at the Josh speaks and ask me your question there. I'm always open to answering people's questions and talking one-on-one. -on -one. Let's see. Ragnar says, Hey Josh, I'm homeschooled. I'm homeschooled and I live near a school and I see a girl walking home every day and I just can't build up enough courage to ask her for her number. So Ragnar, I totally get where you're coming from there. Um, sometimes when you see a girl from a distance, it's like, ah, mm, there she goes. And you don't know how to approach her, right? Especially if she's from a different school or just a random stranger in the neighborhood. But I think that can work to your advantage here. Actually. I think what you can do is when you do see her, you can always walk up to her and say, Hey, I've seen you around. What school do you go to? Do you, you know, and, and if she does go to your school, you can always say, Hey, I've seen you around. Uh, what class are you in? And start the conversation like that. You know, ideally what you want to do is just find common ground, right? So I did a video on this called, I don't remember what it was called, but it was, it was more recent. It was about conversation starters, right? And what it came down to was finding, finding something that you guys can connect with. And that might be something as simple as you go to school, you know, she goes to the school, find out what school she goes to and see how far is her school from where, she, where is she walking from? How far is it? Uh, how far does she live from where she walks to school? You both have that in common. You walk home from school. So that could be a good way to start a conversation. As far as asking for her number, that may take time in seeing her day to day, but you can eventually ask for her number when you say, hey, we're both walking home from school. What are you doing? How about we go grab something to eat? You might be able to segue right into plans of doing something, and then you can ask for her number from there. Um, let's see. Let's grow. Okay, so the chat says here, um, so 698 Floyd, looks like your things are getting, okay. Oh, no, I missed some of the chat. Okay, let's jump in here. Uh, Javon Harrington says, asked a girl out in the seventh grade and failed. Rather, she, uh, she liked my friend, but he hated her now. I'm in 10th grade. How can I retry, uh, with the last time? Okay, cool. That's a good question. Let me see, I could pop out the chat, right? There we go. That makes things easier. Um, so it seems like, oh, we got a super chat. Boom. I'm going to get to that question in a second. Uh, thank you, Kralik. I really appreciate it, man. Uh, let me just get to the other question. I just, so, oh, man, where is it? okay. Oh, I missed it. I totally blanked out what that question was. I apologize. I missed that question. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm going to jump to the super, super chat question. Uh, thank you again, Kralik. I really appreciate it. Um, so let's get into Kralik's question here. Talk to Crush twice. She knows I'm interested. County Fair is here until Tuesday, and I want to take her there. Worth asking out so early or wait? Okay, Kralik. So you talk to her twice, and she knows that you're interested in her. Uh, and the County Fair is running till Tuesday, and you want to take her there. Is it worth asking her out so early or wait? Absolutely, it's totally worth asking her out. And here's why. You're working in a very time-sensitive window here, right? You have till Tuesday. You have till Tuesday to uh, to kind of make things work with her, right? And I think um, even though you've talked to her twice and she knows that you're interested, by asking her to go to the county fair, there's she's not going to look at that and think, oh, wow, that's, that's weird, that's too soon. She's going to look at that and say, well, the county fair is ending. Why not go check it out? Um, I think a good way to lead into it is to let her know something that you're excited about in terms of the county fair, whether it's getting a corn dog or a pretzel or whatever they sell at the county fair, um, hot dogs or whatever you're into, 
uh, tell her, oh man, they have the best hot dogs at this one stand in the county fair, or oh, there's a really cool ride there and I really wanna check it out. Uh, we should go check it out together. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. If it's a local event like that, she's totally gonna be open to the idea, I think, and I don't think she'd be too weirded out or skeptical and think you're trying anything other than just wanting to have a good time and get to know her better. So Kralik, you should totally go for it. And like I said, tie it to wanting to do something specific at the county fair like, oh man, there's a really cool ride or there's um, uh, this awesome food. I want to go check it out and stuff and invite her to come join you. So Kralik, I hope that was helpful. Thank you again for the super chat. Anyone else too, if, if you want to put your question front and center, the chat's kind of skipping over, not letting me stop as much. Um, so you can definitely use the super chat function. Uh, otherwise, you can also message me on Instagram or Snapchat if you want, at the Josh Speaks. Um, Ryan, Ryan, how's it going, man? Ryan's another one, guys. Definitely check out uh, Ryan C. Ryan, if you want, post your Instagram in here. Ryan uh, does a lot of singing videos. He does a lot of live streams on Instagram too. Definitely check him out. He's awesome. Um, so let's see what we got here. So Jackson McGee says, when it comes to asking your crush out to be a girlfriend, what would be the right way to ask? So that's a good question. Um, I have a video on that, Jackson, which also might be helpful called how to go from dating to being in a relationship. Search that, search for that on my channel, but I'll answer that question anyway here. Uh, when it comes to asking your crush to be a girlfriend, what would be the right way to ask? So assuming that you've talked to your crush, right? You've gotten to know her better. You guys really click. Um, you guys have fun when you talk one-on-one. -on -one and you feel like, hey, let's try to make this official in some way, right? I think the best way to lead into that would say, hey, how about you and me start dating exclusively, right? Or, hey, would you wanna be my girlfriend? Or like, I would love for you to be my girlfriend. You can lead into that, but I think, like I said, you need that first part. And the first part is, do you guys talk regularly? Do you get along with each other? Do you make plans to hang out one-on-one? -on -one? Try to focus on building that up first and then lead into asking her out. And definitely check out the video I have because I go way more in depth on that topic. Let's take a quick water break. To anyone new that's joining, by the way, hit the thumbs up on the video here. Let me know that you're excited. Hopefully you get your question answered. Um, and let's just show some love. Thumbs up or love, man. <laughs> okay, cool. So Mastermind says, um, how do I talk to my crush when she is shy? So what do I do? So I have a few videos on this, how to talk to someone who's shy or nervous. Um, uh, if, that's, if that's a super, they usually are going to cost a lot of money. Um, yeah, so the super chat I think is like a dollar or five dollars or whatever it is. Like I said, super chat's there if you want to get your question front and center right now. Or you guys can also message me over on Instagram or Snapchat, you know. Um, I know some of you guys can do it, some can't. No, uh, there's no, no, no harm done uh, either way. Um, so uh, where was I? I just missed the question. Man, I'm scatterbrained right now. Um, oh, how do you talk to your crush when she's shy? What do you do? Okay, so if your crush is shy, right, a good way to start a conversation is um, you have to remember this, that a shy person is always looking for something to make them feel comfortable so they can open up, right? Most people, you know, some people are shy. Some people are not shy, but they're shy only because they don't really know you that well yet, right? Once they get to know you, think about how they are with their friends. If you ever see them with their friends and they're talking and talking and talking, but when they're around you, they're very shy, that simply means that they need to just get to know you better. You need to unlock that, that wall that's holding them back. And the best way to do that, I what I've learned is that the more open you are, the more you're willing to talk about things that you like or talk about yourself or share more about yourself, the easier it's gonna be for them to feel like, hey, this is someone I can trust and be open with, right? So if I, for example, run into someone who I see is shy, I may talk about, hey, you know, uh, I feel nervous in this type of situation. How about you? Or, hey, I really love to do these kind of things. What are your favorite things to do? You know, start a conversation by sharing a little bit about yourself, and especially with your crush. If you see that she's shy around you, start by sharing something and then ask her what she likes in that. For example, you can say like, Oh, me and my friends were talking about our favorite movies the other day, and my favorite movie is, I don't know, Frozen or something. I love Frozen. What's your favorite movie, by the way? And that might get your crush to open up because they're going to say, oh, okay, he told me his favorite movie. Let me tell him mine. It's okay to be open and honest. And that's essentially, that's the frame you want to build with your crush. Let's see. Um, okay, let's scroll down. 
Hey, Ethan, uh, Eth Best Ethan, what's up, man? Good to see you again here. Let's see what we got. Uh, Val says, please, Josh, answer. I talk to her all the time, but as soon as it's recess, she always goes away from, uh, she always goes away. She's, uh, she has a crush on me also. It's just that she's shy and I'm also shy. So Val, um, I just, I shared my opinion on what to do when you're talking to someone who's shy. If you feel shy yourself, here's the key, key few steps I sh you should focus on. And I've shared this a few times. I'm going to share it again because it's super important. I think everyone should remember this. All right. If you ever feel shy around your crush, focus on these three key steps, right? This focusing on these three key steps will help you launch into feeling way more comfortable around your crush. The first step is make eye contact. When you see your crush, try to maintain eye contact with them. A lot of times when people see their crush, they look away or they kind of don't want to make eye contact because they're afraid that if you make eye contact, you might have a conversation. But if you can hold eye contact and look at someone, that shows them, hey, I'm confident enough to look at you and, and maintain that eye contact. Two is smile, right? You don't want to just keep eye contact going. You want to hold eye contact and smile because the smiling is friendly. It lets them see, hey, you know, this person's being polite or they're kind or they're genuine. And the third thing is saying hello, right? Now, you don't have to start a full-fledged conversation if you don't feel ready to, but simply smiling, holding eye contact and saying, hey, how's it going? If you focus on those three steps in the beginning, and you do that day after day after day, your crush is going to become comfortable doing them back to you. And that's where you want to be. Once you're both in that comfort level where you both can look at each other, smile and say hello to another, uh, one another, then you can approach them. Then you can reach out to them and, and, and say, hey, let me ask for your opinion. Let me get your opinion on something and start that conversation. So Val, I hope that was helpful. Let me know. Um, let's see. Blue boy says, Hey, I'm trying to hook up my friend with a cute girl. I know. Can you give me any tips? So blue boy, uh, I'm going to do a video on being a good wingman. That's coming soon. Um, what I would say right off the bat here is I think the best thing is to find something out about his crush, find something out, whether it's her favorite movie, what her hobbies are, what she likes to do in the weekends, find something out about her in conversation or through her friends and share that with your friend. Share that with your friend so that your friend, right, the one who likes her, can bring it up casually in conversation. So here's an example. Let's say, um, let's say that that your friend's crush likes to draw. Let's say she's an avid drawer. She loves to sketch and draw and do all those things. You find that out. Share it with your friend, and then your friend can bring up very casually in conversation. Um, oh, me and my friends were having a contest to see who could draw better. Do you know how to draw? And that is a segue for her to go, oh, I love drawing. How did you know? And, you, and he can say, well, I don't know. I just guessed. But that's awesome that you love drawing. By finding out details like that and sharing it with your friend, it makes it easier for him to start that conversation. So that can be a little kind of trick to kind of, you know, um, give him a little nugget of knowledge about the crush so that he can approach her and have something to work with. Uh, you are my school. You're awesome. Sneakerhead. Man, good to see you. So guys, Sneakerhead Hill. Um, I was at his school today speaking and talking for career day and he was helping me out going around the school and everything, uh, being my, uh, being the lunatic fringe to my architect. Um, if you guys know the wrestling reference, uh, me, him, and then, and, and, uh, his friend were, uh, the shield. So <laughs> it was a lot of fun, but good to see you on here, man. Okay. Ryan Vla Vlahovic says, Josh, I'm in middle school and I like this girl. I've liked her for a while. We talk all the time. How do I ask her out? Okay, Ryan, no problem there. I've done a few videos on asking a girl out in middle school, how to talk to your crush, how to know if your crush likes you. If you simply search middle school on my channel, you'll see all those videos. They should pop up and hopefully they should be helpful for you. Um, so definitely check that out. I think one major tip, like I said, follow the three tips there. Uh, maintain eye contact, smile and say hello. If you focus on that in the beginning and uh, it'll help you kind of start developing some kind of connection with your crush. Uh, then from there, you can work on saying, you know, asking what her favorite movie is, learning learning a little bit more about her and seeing where you guys connect. Maybe you guys like the same things. You don't know it yet. I saw someone had a two-part comment, but I can't scroll up for some reason. Um, like I want to date, uh, uh, eat, 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 oh, I missed it. All right, let me, here, right here. So Ragnar says, Josh, I'm home school. I don't, won't let me scroll up. All right, I'm going to jump in here. I'm sorry, guys. So Angel Boy says, today was the pep rally. I saw my crush. She's the cheerleader. She was doing her cheer routine in the rally. I was thinking about it. What do I do? I really miss her. So today was the pep rally. You saw your crush, and she was doing the cheer rally. So 
Um, in a situation like that where maybe you see your crush from a distance or you don't really interact with them that much, but you just kind of like this person that's like, oh my God, I see them, they're beautiful or whatever it is. Um, I think the best thing to do is to try to think about what your resources are in connecting with them. So here's an example. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe you have a friend in common or a mutual friend or you share a class with one of their friends or you share a class with that crush. Try to find where there's a common link. Because in most cases, there's a common link somewhere. You just got to find it. And when you do find it, try to use that common link to get closer to her. So for example, let's say you share a class with her best friend, right? Start talking to the best friend. Start asking about your crush. Say, oh, you know this person, right? She's she's pretty cool. You shouldn't. Can you introduce me to her? I want to get to know her. She seems interesting. I know she's a cheerleader. She seems really cool. You know, have the friend be the, the gateway there. So try to look for the common links that you guys have together and utilize those. Take another water step. In for night says, my crush and me are always flirting, but she's always trying to tell me that I should date a girl. Um, it could be anyone. I missed, darn it. The chat is going too fast, guys. Um, I really appreciate it though. Keep, keep the comments coming. If I miss your comments, I apologize. Like I said, the super chat function is there. Um, some of you guys can't afford the super chat. That's totally fine. I'll try to get to your comments here. If you want to post them maybe a few times, uh, I'll try to get to it. Try not to spam though. Cause that's not cool. Um, so the hippie place says, Josh, I was wondering if you can make a video on flirting. Absolutely. Um, I know I've talked a lot about talking to your crush, but I haven't really talked a lot about flirting. So I definitely want to get into the flirting topic. I definitely want to get into being a wingman and all those different things. So that's all coming up soon. Um, Let's see. Okay, Ryan. Uh, Ryan says, "Hey, I'm in middle school. I like this girl. We talk with him. I want to hang out with her. What do I say? How do I say it?" So, Ryan. Yeah. yeah. So, going back to that middle school question. Um, uh, like I said, I think what it comes down to at the end of the day is is finding where you guys have common ground. What do you guys like that's similar, and starting a conversation on that. So, ask her what her favorite movie is. What is her favorite animal? What does she like to do for the, on the weekends? What are her hobbies? Let's see. So Hayden, Hayden Curran says, um, I love your content, your channel, great videos. I want to ask if your girlfriend has a friend who doesn't like the idea of you going out, what do? So this is something that happens sometimes, right? You like someone, but the friend hates you, right? If you guys can relate, sorry about that. Um, if you guys can relate to that, let me know in the comments here because um, it's a tough situation to navigate, right? Like your crush is gonna turn to their friend because they trust their friend. They trust their friend's intuition. They trust their friend's opinion. So if the friend doesn't like you, that can just shoot your chances down, boom, right? Like, you know, if the friend says, no, you shouldn't talk to them, they're a jerk, or they're they're this, they're that, without even getting to know you on a personal level, your crush could automatically dismiss you, which is what you don't want. So what it comes down to, I think, is thinking about why you and that friend don't get along and working to repair that relationship. Now, is this a new mic? It's the same mic that I've been using. Um, I just put it higher so that the voice is better because last time I used to put it lower and I don't think it picked up as well, so now I just have it closer here. Um, but yeah, so that's what I would recommend. Um, Try to take time to repair the relationship with a friend. Now you might be asking, well, I don't care about the friend, I care about my crush. But your crush's friend is the kind of gatekeeper to how your crush will perceive you and get to know you. So if you, you know, if you kind of totally ignore the friend and you treat the friend bad, then that's gonna travel back up to your crush, which is what you don't want. Hey guys, try not to spam. Um, let's see what we got here. Okay, cool. Uh, Ethan says, it's almost the end of school year. I'm sad because I'm going to miss her. So Ethan, um, share, share your story again in here. Uh, refresh my memory here. Uh, do you look at your Instagram directs? I do. So if you guys want, you can shoot me a DM on Instagram or shoot me a message on Snapchat. I check all of my messages as well as all of my emails. I answer every single one of them. So you can always shoot me messages over there. My handle's at the Josh Speaks. And I don't have you, give you one second here. Okay. For those of you guys, I'll show you here since I have it on hand. Um, where is it? Here it is. So this is my, uh, my kind of channel card that I created. 
I'm gonna put it up here. Would you guys, if you want, you can you can screenshot this right now and then just add me over on Snapchat to screenshot it right now. All right, cool. So there, add me on Snapchat and I'll, mess, I'll respond to your messages as well as Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Periscope. I don't really use Periscope as much anymore on my channel there. So go follow me over on social if, um, if I don't get to your question here tonight. But this is cool. So. Like I said, the whole purpose of this chat is we're gonna kind of reboot everything, right? So the things I'm sharing with you guys, but I, I really want you to put this into play. I don't want you to just sit on this information. You know, and I think a lot of times people will ask, how do I talk to my crush? And then I'll kind of share some tips and then they don't act on it, right? But I want you guys to be vigilant here. I want you to act on it, right? We're rebooting things. We're taking our break, our spring break, and we're coming back full forced to go after the things that we want, right? So we're doing this together. Okay, so let's see what else we got here. You should do a react video to your first, you should do a react video to your first video. That'd be a lot of fun. Um, I wanna start doing more fun videos, right? I like doing fun videos. I wanna do more reaction videos. I wanna do more challenges. If you guys have ideas and suggestions, let me know. I wanna start having, I wanna start having more fun. Let's have more fun together. That's just always good. Okay, so let's see. So, Okay, when are you showing the videos? Which videos? Um, let's see, L Ledge says, nice live stream, but I'm gonna go now, make sure to be on the next live stream, bye. All right, Ledge, love and peace. Um, by the way, to anyone who, you know, look, I appreciate you guys being here, but if you can't stick around, that's totally fine. Stay around, ask your questions, listen to what I'm saying, get some, you know, get some perspective on different things. Um, at the end of the live stream, what I always do is if you go back to it, I always list all the questions that I answered in the description and I put the timestamp on them. So you can just click on the time and it takes you right to that point in the video, which is super cool. Um, and that way you can just kind of navigate through the questions and see what questions really resonate with you. But like I said, if you're gonna just watch it later, I might not get to your question now. So stick around here and try to get your question through and I'll try to get to it as, as, as soon as I can. Um, like I said, if you want to put it front and center, you can always do that. And you know, that's, that's what the super chat function. That's always an option there. Okay. Clark's bleach. If your phone is dying, either go plug it in or come back later, man. <laughs> I don't want your phone to die on you if you need it. Okay. So Val, oh no, wait, here's uh, Ragnar. Yeah. I saw this question before. I think I missed it. Uh, Josh is a follow up question. So like I said, I'm homeschooled and I don't want to seem weird and walk out of my house when I see the girl I think is cute. So Ragnar, okay, I totally get, I get that, man. So it's like, here's the thing. She doesn't know, first off, that you're homeschooled. She doesn't know that yet, right? She will eventually as you talk to her, but what you can always do is when you see her walking, you can go outside and walk too. And here's the thing, if you have a pet or something, you can go walk your dog or you don't really walk your cat, but you can walk your dog or you can just walk outside and stop her and talk to her. Now she asks you, why are you walking around? The easiest thing to say is, I just wanted to get some fresh air. I've been on inside all day and I needed to get some fresh air. That's it. I think sometimes we try to, we, we craft more complex reasons like, oh, but it's weird and she's gonna think I'm weird. But at the end of the day, no one's gonna challenge, oh, I'm, you're homeschooled and you just came out to get some fresh air and you're going for a walk. That's totally normal, you know? So don't, don't beat yourself up to the point where it's like, ah, nothing is gonna be normal. It's all gonna look weird. Stick with the simple, and the simple is go outside, get some fresh air, start a conversation with her, and walk together. And then you're gonna say, "All right, I'm gonna go back, and I gotta go finish up some some schoolwork." And that's it. Keep it short, keep it simple, but allow that to be your opening to just start with her. Okay. So now it seems like the chat is not moving, which is good. I can kind of go back one by one. Okay. Um, Val says she helps me too. I saw her fantasy book once. I was the prince. She was the princess. It told me more about her. I mean, she was in, uh, she was so in love with me. She dreamed of me having sex with and shy, shy of telling. So it sounds like uh, she told my best friend though. It sounds like she may have a crush on you. Uh, she's writing about you and writing fan fiction and all these different things. I mean, what do you feel is really holding you back from just approaching her and talking to her? You know, is it fear of rejection? Is it fear of not knowing what to say? I mean, it sounds like she is interested in you. He is behind. Yeah, guys, sorry, I'm a little bit behind. I'm trying to catch up. Um, why are the moderators removing my comments? Um, so guys, um, 
try to be not try to not be so trigger happy with the removing comments i guess um only if people are kind of like saying vulgar vulgar things otherwise if people are like why isn't the answer in my comment that's that's okay you know that's not the end of the world there um Brianna M. Okay, Brianna says, I talk to my crush all the time, so it's easy for me to talk to him. But I want to know who he likes. But do I ask him without being awkward and making it obvious that I like him? Okay, so Brianna, this is a very, very common question. Um, you know, how do you kind of ask your crush, hey, who do you like without it being obvious? It's like, oh, well, you're asking me because you like me. You know, how do you do that? Um, a good way to kind of start that conversation is... Um, to, what I would say is this, if you start talking to your crush, right, um, you can know, hmm, actually, I'm rethinking what I'm, what I'm going to say. And I think actually, I don't think directly saying who do you like or asking them who they like is productive, right? And here's why. I think our human curiosity pulls us to want to know who they like, but knowing who they like isn't going to change things for us. It isn't going to help our situation with them. So I think instead of trying to figure out who they like, give them a good enough reason to start liking you. That's what I think everyone should do, right? Like if you like someone, talk to them, approach them, get to know them, uh, ask them about their hobbies, what they, what you guys, find out what you guys have an interest, uh, find, find interest that you both commonly share. And as they get to know you better, you'll start to see if, yeah, maybe they have a crush on someone else, but now they can start developing a crush on you. And in their behavior and how they interact with you and how they talk to you, you'll start to see if they like you. So I know our human curiosity is always, who do they like? Do they like me? Oh my God, they like that girl and not me. And our human curiosity is always pulling us to try to figure out what people wanna do, what people like. But at the end of the day, if you like them, right, what you really want is for him to like you back. And the best way to make that happen at all is to get to know him better. Uh, let's see what we've got. Mods, can I post my question? Yeah, guys, post your questions. Um, Damien or whoever is the mods here, try to not, like I said, try to not be so trigger happy um, with things. It sounds like people are getting a little upset here. Um, let's see, Original TV says, can you give a tip on getting a crush that's older than yourself in high school? Totally. I have a video on that exact topic, how to ask out someone that's older than you. Definitely check out that video because I think it'll be super helpful for you. Um, what I would highly recommend is um, if you're talking to someone who's older, right? Then that means that where you are, let's say in school or classes or just life maybe, they've already probably ex experienced that. And maybe they're onto something different, right? So let's say you're in, the, uh, you're in high school, right? Let's say you are a sophomore and they're a senior, right? Or sophomore and a junior right? A sophomore might be focusing more on preparing for tests and standardized tests and things like that. Um, whereas a junior might be focusing more on SATs, right? So you have to recognize that there's a little discrepancy, a little difference in between what you guys are focused on in life. And if you could figure out what they're focused on, what their interests are, what they're doing uh, at being one year older than you, then it can be easier for you to start the conversation and develop something there. So try to learn about where they are in life, especially if they're older than you, so you can, you can try to jump to their level in conversation. Um, so Damian Gray says, Josh, has, pad, has past relationships affected your current ones? Um, I think with every relationship you have, every you know person you date or anything like that, um, it does affect your current relationships uh, to an extent. Um, everyone is unique, everyone's individual, and you interact with people on different levels. But I think the experience you gain from a relationship carries over into your next relationship, right? So um, if you're with a partner that's loving and kind and caring, and let's say it just doesn't work out, when you look for a new partner, you're gonna, you're gonna kinda look for those general same qualities. Now the same also goes sadly for negative qualities, right? Sometimes, and, and it could be the opposite, sometimes people find a person who's bad for them and they have a horrible breakup, but then they find a new person who's just like the old one, right? Because they're stuck in that cycle, that's what they're used to. Or sometimes you have a bad relationship and it totally flips you over and you totally say, I want the opposite of that person. So for me personally, um, I think the experiences I had have taught me things. I don't think they affect my perception of things day to day. 
If he says he's jumping or skipping, by all means, re-ask. But spamming will make the chat faster, make other people wait longer for a reply. Yeah, I agree, guys. Try not to spam. I apologize if I don't get to all your questions or if I miss over your question. I'm trying to get through them. I'm going them. See the chat jump there. I'm trying to uh, do them one by one because I'm trying to be fair about it. Um, oh, did I? We got another super chat here. Um, I almost missed it. My apologies. So Kralik says, tips on acting natural around your crush. Kralik, once again, thank you for the, the super chat. I really appreciate it, man. Um, tips on acting natural around your crush. So that's a really good question. Um, what I would recommend is a good way to start feeling natural around your crush is to think about how you act around your friends, right? So this could be kind of like a mind hack type of thing where think about how you are with your friends, right? When you're hanging out with your friends, it's very calm and collected and relaxed. And, um, and ideally it's like, there isn't this awkwardness or weirdness. You can just freely say what you want. You can be open. You can talk about things. You can share how you feel. And it's not a problem. You know, it's not like, it's not like you ever say like, oh, should I bring that up for my friends? You just do. And you feel that level of comfort. Now, that's what you want to build. I mean, it's different from your friends because maybe you're a little bit more rowdy and crazy and you don't want to be like that with your crush, but you want the same kind of ease of, of, of interaction with your crush than the same way you have with your friends. So a good way to start acting natural around your crush is to start asking yourself when you interact with them, um, if your friend were to tell you the same thing that they told you, let's say your crush says, oh, um, I don't know, I... I really, uh, I'm really, I'm really interested in this new Selena Gomez song, right? How would you react if your friend told you that, right? If your friend's like, "Oh, I really like this new song," you'd be like, "Oh, cool, that's cool, man." Um, you know, that's cool. Like, what other songs do you like? So try to take those same kind of responses and apply them to your crush here. I think that's the best way to act natural. You want to think who you act natural around naturally, <laughs> and reapply that mindset to interacting with your crush. I hope that was helpful, Kralik. Uh, thank you again for the super chat. I really appreciate it. Val says, yes, yes, yes. Finally, somebody understands me. It's fear of rejection that stops me from doing that. I think it's the same thing that stops her from doing it too. Val, I totally am with you on that. Um, no one wants to be rejected, right? The idea of being rejected is is scary and, 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 and tough to deal with. Um, and, you know, I think the best way to kind of work around that is um, to work around that fear really, really is to, to experience, right? Because you can't ever truly get past the fear until you've breaking it down, until and you've broken it down, until you've dismantled it and you've taken away its power and you've stripped it down to the point where you really ask yourself, what is so scary about it, you know? So in talking to your crush, if you break it down, let's break that down right now. You say hello to them. You start a conversation. What's what's the worst that can happen? They ignore you. They make fun of you. They um, tell you to, to buzz off. They say all these different things. And then what, right? Eventually, they're going to stop caring. They're going to go about their daily lives. And eventually, you're going to go about your daily life too. At the end of the day, the fear of rejection is worse sometimes than actual rejection. And rejection hurts. Rejection can suck. It can make you feel bad. You may not want to talk to people. It can make you feel worthless. I get that. But it's the fear of rejection that really holds us back, you know? Because once we've been rejected, that's where you say, okay, look, it didn't work out. There's nothing I can do about it. All I can do is move forward. But you can't do that if you're stuck in the fear stage. You can't move forward because you, you haven't experienced anything to move past. Santiago Alvarez says, um, hey, Josh, I'm in high school and I like this girl who sits next to me in English. We talked a lot and I mock her playfully, but I know very little about her. How should I proceed? Okay, cool. So you're in high school. You like this girl who sits next to you in English. We talk a lot. You mock her playfully, but I know very little about her. How should I proceed? Okay. Sometimes I read the question and then I reread them so I can really lock it down. Um, just so you guys don't think I'm weird or anything. Um, <laughs> all right. Um, by the way, anyone who's new here, thank you for joining this chat. Um, like I said, um, it's a spring break Q&A. Some of you guys already had spring break, some haven't. But either way, we're trying to reboot our way of thinking. We're trying to say, hey, listen, uh, the old way of thinking wasn't working so well, so now we're trying something new. We're gonna test new strategies. 
the things we talk about here, I want you guys to, I'm gonna slam my hand here. I want you guys to act on them. I want you to be proactive. And I want you guys to let me know how it works. Does did it was it successful? Was it a failure? Let's test and let's try together. But let's not just sit on information. Okay. That's not allowed here. We're not we're not just gonna sit on information. We're gonna act on information. Okay. Sorry about that. Back to the question. Um, you like this girl, she sits next to you. So how do you start the conversation with someone who's right next to you in English? Um, I think a good way to do that. Here's the thing too, and I, I'm always mentioning finding commonalities, finding finding things that you guys can connect over, right? The fact that you guys are in English class together serves the purpose alone that you have something, right? Something small at least to start a conversation about. And you can always turn to her and say, hey, did you finish the English homework? Or, hey, what are you gonna write for that essay? Or, hey, did you do the reading? There's a lot of baseline things you can use to start talking to her. And now you say you talk to her a lot and you mock her playfully, um, but you know very little about her. So, so since you're already starting those conversation topics, I think a good segue, and this is the segue that I've used before and I always tell people to use is, hey, listen, um, enough about English. Tell me about you. What do you like? What are some of your hobbies? And that I think is an easy way to shift it into more personal things, right? It could be an English class. It can be about on a track team or in sports. You can say, hey, enough about basketball. What about you? Tell me about yourself. Um, there's a, a lot of different little ways you can kind of turn it to make it more personal, make it a more personal conversation. So I would say put that into play. Um, Brad Jack says, if I ask my question now and she says, "Not uh, no, not now, should I move on or stay with her? Uh, I think we got another super chat. Um, Gamers, thank you so much. I truly appreciate it, man. Um, really means a lot to me. If you have a question, um, let me know. I might be ignoring it. Guys, I'm not ignoring anything, I think. Uh, I hope not. Um, oh, man, now I, forgot, now I forgot the other question. Yeah, guys, I missed out. The chat jumped again, but I apologize. Um, all right, yeah, Brad, here we go. Oh, cool, I got the question, okay. If I ask my question now, she says, no, should I move on and stay with her? No, that wasn't exactly the question. Man, they need to fix this chat a little bit because <laughs> it's hard to jump, it's hard to follow along. But thank you uh, for the super chat, I truly appreciate it. Okay, let's jump in here. Um, basically says, I want my crush to like me, but she's in the other side of the room in every class, what do I do? Okay, so your crush is just a little too far out of reach, right? Um, I did a video on this uh, called how to ask your crush out or how to talk to your crush when you never see them around. And yes, you do see them around, she's in your class, but you're kind of out of reach with each other. So you have to think about what are the opportunities where you can talk to her, right? That's at the beginning of class when class begins and that's at the end of class when you're both walking to the next one. Those are gonna be your golden opportunities. Now, I'm not saying they're great or perfect and you might only have 20 seconds at most to interact with them as you're packing up or as you're waiting to go into class. You know, it's a very small window, but it's a window nonetheless. And that's the best window you have to take. So in those type of situations, what I would really recommend doing is um, before you walk into class, maybe spend a little bit of time before you're going into class. And when you see her walking in, when you see her walking in, walk in with her and talk to her. Say, hey, um, me and my friends were talking about something. I wanted to get your opinion on something before class begins. And just start that little conversation and say, all right, I'm gonna go to my seat. It was cool talking to you. And then go back. And all you're doing is establishing the groundwork because if you do that in the beginning, when class ends or on the next time when you're both walking in, you can progress the conversation and your crush will start to feel more comfortable talking to you because it'll become more normalized. So I hope that was helpful. It's Fire Lies, it's Fire Lies plays, says, my girlfriend is moving to the other side of the earth. What do you think I should do? That's a tough one, man. Long distance relationships are not easy. So I see where you're coming from on that. Um, what I would really recommend doing is uh, asking yourself if um, the relationship you're in is something that you can maintain. You know, a lot of times when situations like that occur, and uh, it's tough. It's really tough to um, it's really tough to maintain a solid relationship. Um, and you have to ask yourself, is it po if it's possible for you two to re remain in contact, is it possible for you to see her again at some point? Is she moving in the sense that you're never gonna see her again? And if that's the case, it's probably best for you guys to just stay friends and leave it at that. 
Okay, magazine. I got your two-part question here. I'm going to answer it. Um, Josh, I met this girl in my college library. I spoke to her, and she asked my name before I, uh, she asked my name before I asked her. Uh, we told each other our names. She knows that I like her, and she says she said I'll see you around. I added her on Facebook. She declined. I messaged her, and she didn't reply yet. This happened eight weeks ago, but she still smiles at me in college. We haven't spoken since. What should I do? That's interesting. So she's seems to be talking to you in person, but she's ignoring you on Facebook, which is really interesting. Um, I'm not really sure why she would do that, but it seems like you at least have the ability to talk to her in person. Maybe she just feels like she doesn't know you well enough, um, and that might be it, really. I think the fact that you can interact with in person, I think, is going to be your golden opportunity here. That's where you can excel the most. Um, so when you do see her in the library and you do talk to her, um, try to really dig deeper into conversation, right? Sometimes it's it's hard when you're in college and you're in the library. It's it's easy to keep conversation at baseline level. Mm. It's easy to keep conversation at a level where it's like, so what are you studying and what are you doing? But try to dig deeper into dig deeper into her personality. I think that's really, really going to help you um, get to know her better and for her to get to know you better. Because if you ask more detailed questions, if you ask more about like, what are, you, what are your hobbies? What do you like to do for fun? Um, and things like that, then it's going to be way easier for her to kind of feel like, Oh, I can open up and talk to him. What are his hobbies? And she's going to ask you about the things you like more. Let's see what we got. Mm. Okay. So Santiago says, um, my nose is all dry. My allergies have been kicking my butt, guys. So I apologize. Um, Santiago says, hey, Josh, I'm in high school, and I like this girl who sits next to me in English. Oh, Santiago, I answered that question, I think. Um, Ethan says, how I get mad, how I, how I get mad crush. Like I want to have a good relationship because I see YouTubers with girlfriends and friends. Um, so Ethan, um, look, the truth of the matter is, is that, you know, YouTubers or whatever you may see online, um, is not as, no, it's direct. um, just because you see people living the life up on YouTube and stuff doesn't always mean things are grand and great. Um, a lot of times it's, it's people are playing things up for camera or they're only showing you the good parts. So I wouldn't compare your re real life to something you see on YouTube. It's not a fair comparison, right? Because you only see snippets of things on YouTube. Friend, I really like this song. Let's see. So the next Lord says, I like this girl. Um, we don't really talk unless it is necessary. It's quite here two periods and sometimes in the hallway. How should I proceed? That's a good question. So you, you don't talk unless it's necessary and you see her in two periods and sometimes in a hall, should I proceed? So the next slide. Um, just to clue you guys in, I'm working on a document that's going to be 20 easy icebreaker conversations. And these are going to be how you, it's going to be a bunch of different icebreakers broken down into how you guys can kind of start a conversation. I'm going to do a video explaining a little bit more, but um, I think you ideally need an icebreaker conversation. And a good way to lead into an icebreaker conversation like that is to have some kind of setting. And I think a good setting is always, hey, me and my friends were having a conversation. I want to get your quick opinion on something. Uh, that could be asking her in class. That could be um, talking to her when you see her in the hallways. Just get saying, I need a girl's opinion on something or, you know, ra I need a random person's opinion on something might lead you to dig deeper into the conversation. So let's say you ask for her opinion on a good movie and she says her favorite movie is, I uh, used Frozen before, let's use Fast and the Furious, right? You can always say, oh, cool. Have you seen all the Fast and the Furious movies? Do you like any other Vin Diesel movies? Uh, you know, you can lead in deeper into the conversation and just segue away away from original your original point of, oh, me and my friends are having a conversation and just ask her more detailed questions about her. So that might be a good way to, to, to set up that icebreaker, I think, with her. Okay, Jack the Ripper says, so there's this girl. We talk and I have her address and her phone number. I think she likes me. What do I do? Please help. I'm confused. Okay, so um, I think having her address <clears throat> isn't going to do anything for now. Um, maybe if you get closer to her, maybe if you guys really start to like each other, then it's possible that you might say, hey, let's meet up, um, what you're at. You know, having information about someone before you've talked to them, I believe is kind of useless, right? You never want to tell someone, oh, I already know your address. I already know your phone number, right? 
ideally you're going to re-ask them even if you already have it. So having it to start before you talk to them is kind of useless in a way. Um, you know, so I wouldn't count on that as a, oh, cool, I have her address. That makes me closer. Real closeness comes from her giving it to you, her sharing that with you because then she trusts you enough to share that. So um, you think she likes you, what do you do? I think the best way to find out if she likes you or not is truly just to talk to her, to get to know her better, to ask her to hang out one-on-one. -on -one. So Said says, attempt number nine. So Said, I apologize if I... Uh, if I missed out on some of your questions, apologize about that. Bro, how do I talk to this girl when I only see her on the bus and she's always putting her bag there? Sometimes I see her look at me and when I look back, she quickly turns, what do I do? Attempt number nine. Okay, so um, I've talked to a few people about this. They like someone on their bus. How do you make that work, right? Because I'm thinking what you're saying, she put her puts her, her bag in the seat and that's it, she takes up the whole seat. Um, a good way to, to maybe figure that out. So here's the, here's, there's a few maybe techniques, things you could try. One thing you can try is maybe trying to get on the bus a little bit later. So it's kind of packed and that way you can go next to her and say, Hey, is it cool if I sit here? Cause then she'll move her back for you. So maybe you can hold out and then show up on the bus later. Another technique is as you're walking past from the bus, you can stop. Um, and you can just ask her and say, Hey, is it cool if I sit here? Now, if she asks you, well, why sit over there or sit somewhere else? You can simply just say, well, I wanted to ask you a question first. I'll probably jump back there in a second, but I wanted to talk to you for a second. Because um, what you're doing is you're setting up the context where, hey, this conversation is going to be very temporary, and then I'm going to go back. If the conversation goes well, you just keep sitting there. If the conversation goes bad, you say, all right, cool, I'm going to hop back over there. And that's it. Um, but either way, you at least set up the framework where you two can at least talk for a bit, and you can at least share something in common. So Rishi Manga, cool Mega Man uh, avatar there. Uh, I think the best way to get your crush is to stop stop having is by stop having a crush, uh, by not being addicted to a single person and valuing your own self. Look at situations realistically in a sense. So Rishi Manga, I think that's I think that's good advice. Um, I don't think everyone has to stop having crushes, but I do think you you need to value your own self. A lot of times we think that we're not good enough to talk to our crush, or we feel like. Our crush is immediately going to reject us or they're too cool for us or they like someone else and therefore they're out of, out of bounds for me. Um, and what you're doing is you're just assuming that you have lower value. You're assuming that you're just not good enough, which isn't true. Even if your crush rejects you, that doesn't mean you're not good enough. That means that you're not right for them. And that's okay because not everyone is right for everyone else. So Rishi, good, good point on there. Uh, Utsav Jun, 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 Juneha says, hey, Josh, my crush hates me because of my extra stick stickiness to her. What can I do to recover now? So your crush hates you because you're extra stickiness to her. So it sounds like maybe you are a little too attached or you're a little too on top of things or maybe you're smothering her a little too much. Um, the best thing is to kind of have a bit of a push-pull there. Like you want to joke around and tease her and ask her questions and talk to her, but you don't want to do that all the time because then she's going to feel like, all right, he's too much right now. You want to kind of give her space, give her a few days, don't talk to her, or keep conversations small. You don't always want to drill down, let's have long conversations, let's have long conversations, because that can be really draining for someone. So try to balance it out by giving her a few days to herself, then starting conversations and doing that every so often. So Paula Steven says, um, uh, my name is Peyton, and it's getting close to the end of our school year. Should I go ahead and tell my crush that I like her and ask her out? So this is something I'm, I'm eventually going to do another uh, video on this, or a, a video on this soon, right? The time is coming. School is going to end soon. You like someone, and you're dying. You're dying to know whether or not, should I just tell them how I feel to see if it can work, or should I just let the school year end without saying anything? What's the right thing to do, right? It's a really tough question. Um, what I would really recommend though is, um, think about how much time you have. Let's say you're finishing school in May or June, right? Think about how much time you have and ask yourself, let's say you have a month. Let's say you have two weeks, three weeks, every single day for the next two weeks, I'm going to start and have a little conversation with them up until maybe the last week of school. Then I'm really going to go full force and start talking to them and ask them out to hang out. Um, I think you have to start taking those small steps, right? Everything is small steps, and it's important to recognize that. Sometimes we wanna jump from zero to 100, like 
I never talked to my crush, but school's ending, so now I want to ask them out. And they don't know you yet. They need to get to know you first. So try to take a little slower, Peyton. Take some time to get to know her and start doing that on Monday. Start doing it on Monday. Start talking to her, get to know her better, and see if you can build something in the time that you have. Take a water break here. Magazine, no reply, I want to cry. I responded to your your uh, your question, Magazine. Um, so I apologize. Um, I apologize if I missed another piece to it, but I apologize too if I missed anyone else's questions. I'm really trying to get to everything, um, but sometimes the chat jumps on me and it's really annoying, so I apologize. Um, and I'll share it once again here. Anyone here that's new, if you want to add me, I wish Instagram had a code. You want to add me up over on Snapchat? You can do that. All you got to do is screenshot the screen right now. And it'll pick up this code, and you can add me there on Snapchat. And you can ask me your questions over on Snapchat, and I'll definitely answer them there if I miss miss it here. Um, but it'll be text answering, whereas now you got me on camera right now. I can answer it live for you guys and everything. So, um, Okay, the next Lord says, um, I like this girl. We don't you, uh, we don't really talk unless it's necessary in school. I see her in two periods and sometimes in the hallways. I'm not sure how I to approach her exactly. Okay, so next, Lord, I believe I answered this question uh, earlier, and I think the, what I was saying, the key is um, you see in two periods, sometimes in the hallways. Try to talk to her at the beginning of class or at the end of class. I think that might be the most beneficial there. Um, so Utsav says, she blocked me. She don't even reply to me when asking uh, something on her face. Hmm. So Utsab, it sounds like she may just be trying to distance herself from you. Maybe she feels like she's leading you on in some way, or um, she feels maybe weird now. Her her feelings might have changed towards you. Uh, the best thing might be to try to talk to her directly face to face. And a lot of times when I say that to people, I, they're like, oh, I tried talking to my crush, but they don't respond to me. And I wonder, like, are you calling out their name and saying, hey, you, um, I want to talk to you about something. Or are you kind of just like casually talking in conversation in a group and they don't respond to you? So it really depends. Um, but, you know, I think that's what I would say. Infer says, uh, Infer Knight says, my crush and me are always flirting, but she is saying that I should date any girl. Uh, it could be, oh, here, I saw this question before and I missed it. Um, saying I should date any girl. It could be anyone in our group or a girl she sees past, but what does it mean? Hmm. So it sounds to me like, hmm, it sounds to me like she may not feel like she's dateable, or she may not feel like she's in your league, or it might me might be a way of her kind of like dissuade you and get you to ask out other girls and not her. It's really hard to tell. Um, but what I would recommend doing is if she says something like that, you can say, yeah, but I'm not interested in other girls right now. I like you, and I think you're cool. Um, put it back on her. Let her see that you like her. You know, don't. Don't take the bait of, oh, yeah, I could ask other girls. Say, yeah, but that's not my concern right now. I like you. You know, be straightforward, be confident about it. Um, gaming with Jaden says, you help me uh, You help me date someone, I use your techniques. Awesome, Jaden. That's super cool, man. Give him some leeway. Damien, if you missed it, it's not his fault. Uh, Damien, I'm sorry if I'm missing your comments. I apologize here. I'll try my best to get to everything. Um, so let's see. Tommy McMillan says, I'm really, really shy. I don't have many friends and have a lot of trouble making friends. So how do I approach my crush and not come off like a creep? Or should I become friends with her first? So hmm, I'm really shy. I don't have many friends and have a lot of trouble making friends. So Tommy, I, I see where you're coming from. Um, sometimes making friends can be difficult, right? It's not always just easy. Um, sometimes you just don't connect. Mm. Sometimes you just don't connect with the people in your class or, you know, you just haven't found the right people that you really get along with. And I get that. I totally get that. Um, what I would really, really recommend is uh, in terms of approaching your crush and not coming off like a creep, the best way I think to not come off like a creep is to share more about yourself, right? So a creep generally just asks a lot of detailed questions, but never shares anything about themselves. What do you like? What do you like to do? Why do you like to do it? When do you like to do it? Where do you like to do it? They ask all these detailed questions, but they never share about themselves. So I think the best way to avoid creep status is to be open and honest about yourself, right? So 
I share a lot of my life stories here because I feel like it helps you guys understand me as a person better. And I think that's important too. When you're talking to your crush, share your own stories so that your crush can get to know you better. Because when you get to know someone better, you won't really view them as a creep. You'll start to say, okay, they're a person with feelings and experiences and that's cool and I can get to know them better. Okay, Mining Cat says, how do I choose between two girls? Mining Cat, I've done a video on that exact topic which you should definitely check out. Um, I talk about how to qualify two girls and that's the beginning of, of how I got my second girlfriend. Um, there were two girls that I liked and both of them were really cool and the only way for me to find out which one I liked more was really by hanging out with both of them individually. I started to see who I connected with better and I decided to ask out the one I really connected with a lot better. Um, Darth Vader says, how do you move on from rejection if you see your crush frequently? So that can suck sometimes, right guys? Are you with me on that? Like your crush rejects you, but they're in your class. So you see them in the hallway all the time, or they're friends with your friends and like, you can't escape them. They're always there, but they rejected you. Right. I think the best thing to do is to start to try to, well, one is probably as much as you can distance yourself from your, that crush. And two, try to put that crush in more of a friend status, right? Try to look at them less like a crush and more like a friend. And I know that's not easy to do because when you like someone, you like someone like, let's be real here. But Try to think more, try to think of them more as a friend. Try to say to yourself, um, maybe my crush has friends I can talk to. Maybe they can introduce me to some other girls. Try to then, like, you know, that's a good way to help turn your crush into a friend by, hey, uh, you know, you're, you're my crush here. You know, let's say you're talking to your crush. Um, introduce me to some of your friends. Let me get to know them and see maybe you can develop a crush on one of the other girls or, or another friend. Um, so hopefully that's helpful. Um, let's see. Uh, Coin Hunter says, I told my best friend, your crush, I liked her. I got friends with but I don't want to move on yet. What should I do? So Coin Hunter, I get you on that, man. It's like sometimes when people are like, oh, I've been friend zone. What do I do? And I say, I think the best thing is to let go and move on. And they're like, no, I don't want to lose a friendship. You know, I get that. That's the common rea rea uh, response and reaction. Um, and it's not easy. It's not weird. Like, it's not easy to just flip a switch and say, okay, this person's out of my life. Um, and I think that has to start with you mentally, mentally making that switch, right? So even though you may see them from time to time and hang out with them, mentally maybe you try to talk to them less often, you try to not reach out to them as much, you try to let distance build, even if you have to say hello when you see them or you hang out once in a while. Um, but I think the best thing is to move on, right? Like eventually you have to get over it. And the best way to get over it is to move on. Um, Reese says, Hey, how can I get over being scared of driving? I practiced some in the yard today, but I'm still super scared about, uh, about it. So I want to share, I'm going to also share, uh, my driving experience, how I learned to drive and some crazy driving stories and things that have happened to me, um, while driving. But Reese, I get where you're coming from, man. Driving is not easy. Some people pick it up and it's good, but it's not easy. It's you're, you're in a moving vehicle. You're moving at speeds and a number of things can go wrong. And that's not, I'm not trying to add more fear there, but once you get a grip on it, it becomes easier. But um, I think you just got to keep practicing a little bit, a little bit at a time, more and more. Um, you got to understand, you know, a car is like a like an editing program or like a, a basketball or like any other kind of tool, right? You can either be really good with it, you can be moderate, or you can suck at it, right? You can be anywhere in between, um, but it's in practice over and over, learning the mechanics of something. So with a car, it's learning the mechanics of the, the gas pedal and the stop brake. Um, learning how to turn, learning how to look at your mirrors. You have to practice those things over and over. It's the same with the basketball. Like some people can just dribble and that's it, but some people can throw it under their legs and can shoot three pointers. And that takes time. It takes precision to say, how far is the basket? How much power do I have to use in the launch? And you have to practice those things. So I know it's scary. Give it time, man. Um, and eventually you'll learn it. You know, Ryan says, um, hey Josh, how do I ask on my crush? Uh, because just becoming friends with her do doesn't really go, doesn't really go very far. I totally get that. Um, I always say like, try to develop a friendship with your crush in the beginning. And 
Uh, what I really mean by that is um, try to get on a friendly level with them to the point where you guys can talk to each other. You could share things with each other, right? The difference between being in the friend zone and the friendship all comes down to your intentions that are put forward as to how you feel about your crush. I did a video on this called friendship versus friend zone and it really comes down to that, right? If you're in the friend zone, it means that you know you have feelings for this person but you never put them forward in the beginning. You kind of hid them away and then when you did act on them it was too late. When you have a friendship with someone, it means that you don't have romantic feelings for them but you just accept that they're your friend. They can be in your life, you can talk to them and there isn't this tension or anger or sadness that you feel in not being with them. So Ryan, in terms of um, asking out your crush and not just being friends, I think I think you answered your own question there, man. You just gotta ask her out. You gotta ask her to hang out. You gotta ask to spend time with her. That's how you're really gonna break out of that friend zone. Um, it's fire, fire lies says, my girlfriend has moved to the other side of the earth. What do you think I should do? So I answered that earlier. Um, it can be very tough to maintain a long distance relationship. I think the best thing might be to, to let it go and to try to remain just friends. Um, Rishi says, next floor, you can tell her you think she's cool to talk to. Yep, Rishi, thank you so much for jumping in here and, and, and responding to some comments here. Anyone else too, if I miss things, um, you guys can always help me answer each other. That's always super helpful. Um, let's see, Brianna says, how can I help my friend because she got rejected by her crush? Okay, so that's a good question. Um, sometimes, you know, look, not sometimes, all the time rejection sucks, right? I don't think anyone's happy to get rejected. Like, yeah, that's cool. All the time rejection sucks. Um, and sometimes we need our friends to kind of just be there for us. So what's the best way to be there for a friend when they're hurting? Um, ideally, what everyone needs when they're sad is to know that they can turn to someone and that person will non-judgmentally hear them out. So Brianna, what I would really recommend what I would really recommend doing is telling her, saying, listen, uh, I know you feel really bad right now, and I want you to know, though, that I'm here to listen to you, to hear you out, and to be by your side, regardless of what you have to say. Telling your friend that might be exactly what she needs to feel like she's not alone, right? Sometimes when you get rejected, you feel like you're alone in the process. You're the only one there with your feelings. And if you can be empathic and let her know, hey, I, I feel with you and I'm here to listen, that might be exactly what she needs to kind of feel better. So, oh, we got a tip here, gamers, gamers ZX uh, 1014. Thank you so much. I don't know why it didn't pop up on the top. I really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for the super chats. Uh, you guys are awesome. Um, and oh no, I just missed something. I missed the comment. I'm scrolling up here, but I saw a comment. I don't know who it's by, and I usually like to read the people's names, but um, it's, I believe, oh, here it is. Uh, Stewie TV says, how do I stop cutting? So Stewie, um, that's a real tough thing, man. Um, first, what I want you to know is that um, you can always message me. You can always shoot me a message when you feel down and depressed. There's a, quite a few people that I talk to on Instagram DM um, who are depressed sometimes and you know, they just shoot me a message Let me know how they're feeling and I'd let them know that I'm there for them um, If you feel like you turn to cutting um, I Think hopefully what what you can try doing is trying to find an alternative way to handle how you feel right so the reality is it's like The way that you feel about something is never wrong, right? No one's ever wrong in feeling angry or hurt or rageful or vengeful. You're, you're never wrong for feeling that way. It matter, What matters is what you do with your feelings, right? What do you do with the mad that you feel? And I think the key to it all is for some, they feel the need to cut or they feel the need to harm themselves. I have a video on that called How to Talk to Your Parents About Self-Harm. You definitely check out that video, Stewie. I definitely think you should check it out and it'll be helpful, hopefully. Um, but if you do feel like you are prone to cutting, try talking to a parent about it. Um, um, and another solution might be to try to find a hobby or something that you can do actively. So when you feel like you're in those moments where you're drawn to cutting, maybe instead you can cut paper with scissors or draw or go for a jog. Try to find another activity to shift your sadness or anger or hurt to 
that might be a little bit more productive and less destructive. Um, hopefully that's helpful in some way. So King Kingzer Gaming says, I like this girl. She's nice. She comes to my house sometimes. Um, we've known each other for over a few years and I don't know what do I do. I feel like doing something. Okay. So it sounds like you've known each other for a while and it's like, so what are we kind of thing, right? Um, that was really weird. Apologize for the yawning. Um, so you've known her for a while and you feel like, how do I make this move? Um, I think a good way to lead into it, and this is what I, I've said this to a few people in the past, um, would be to kind of, the next time you see her, start talking to her and, and say something like, what is it about you? I feel like there's something different about you. I don't really know what it is, but I do want to get to know what that's about. So what are you doing this Friday? How about we just hang out, just you and me? And, you know, what you're essentially doing is you're letting her know that you feel differently about her. And you, you, don't really, you, re you don't really know where those feelings are going or what they mean, but you do want to explore them. And that's the kind of attitude you want to carry. So when you do hang out with her one-on-one, -on -one, change your focus. Start being more romantic. Start flirting more. Start joking around more and see where you can go with that. Um, Damien, I don't know if he is. The comment he's reading now is just below my recent one. Yes, yeah, so I know I'm, I'm a little behind. I'm not intentionally ignoring anything. Um, I don't want you guys to think that at all. I'm not not trying to ignore anything. I'm trying to get to everything, but sometimes the chat jumps and then, uh, then it just becomes overwhelming, so I just start somewhere. Um, nerd, nerd guy says, how do you find out if your crush secretly likes you? That's a really good question. Um, I think a good way to find out if your crush secretly likes you is to talk to them, right? <laughs> that seems like... Oh, that's not the answer you want to hear, but I don't think your focus should be on whether or not someone secretly likes you or they might like you. I think your focus should be on if you like them, how do you get them to like you back and preferably openly like you back? And the best way to do that is interacting with them, is talking with them, is asking them out. Um, Emu, Emu HQ says, how do you find if a crush secretly likes you? So same question. I kind of give my answer on that. Uh, Ryan says, Hey Josh, how do I ask my crush? If we're in the same class together, should I ask her for help on a project? Ryan, I do remember us talking about this. I think that's a totally great way to start a conversation. Ask for help on a project. See if you can spend one-on-one -on -one time with her. Okay. So Val says, um, um, Val says, what happens if you start talking to your crush and you get so embarrassed and freak out? So that can happen sometimes. Like in the moment you just blank out and you feel like, you know, you don't know what to do. You don't know how to respond. That's okay. That's going to happen sometimes. You know, like not every time you're going to roll into a situation and be like, Hey, how's it going? Yeah. Um, I have a video that's similar to that topic and it's called, uh, how to approach your crush in three seconds. And I talk about the three second rule. So what the three second rule is, is when you see someone you want to talk to, give yourself no more than three seconds to walk up to them and say, hi, you don't have to start a full conversation. You don't have to ask them what their favorite hobbies are. Just say hi. Right? So, um, if you're talking to your crush and you get embarrassed and you freak out, the simplest thing to do is say, um, but anyway, I got to go get meet up with my friends. So it was good talking to you again. It's no one's going to question you saying I have to go meet up with my friends or, oh, I got to take a phone call or I got to text my mom or something like that. Just find a simple reason for you to exit and say, but it was really nice talking to you because what you're doing is you're just letting them know, Hey, I enjoyed our conversation and we'll continue it later. You're not even saying we'll continue it later, but by simply saying, I really liked talking to you, you're letting them know that it's easy to open up to them. So, so Sean says, um, uh, Hey Reese, uh, driving is fun. You'll be okay. Driving is really overwhelming. When you first learn, but as you, as you get used to it, you, uh, you'll like it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I can't wait now to share my, uh, to make a video on my driving story and my experiences. Cause I think it was, it was such a crazy thing. Um, but now that I, I've been driving for years, I'm feel so comfortable in, in, uh, driving the, the, the car that I drive. So so let's see what else we got. Josh uh, is good. He made me get a girlfriend, Jaden Davis. I'm super happy for you, man. CBA says, hey, Josh, I had super chat. Just donate, but my parents won't let me. It's totally cool. No one is obligated to super chat. Um, like I said, that's just a the function there is 
If you really want to get that question in front of me and you want me to see it and you need an answer now, that's always the go-to quick option. Um, otherwise, I'll try to answer it here in the chat during the live stream. And the other option is you can shoot me a message and I'll try to get to it whenever I can. Um, but to anyone new, and I'm sorry if I'm repeating this, guys, but to anyone new that just maybe joined in the last 10 minutes or whatever, uh, this is a spring break Q&A. Now, I'm interpreting spring break since everyone has different spring break time periods. I'm interpreting it as a time for us to start anew, to kind of reboot our way of thinking, right? And I shared a lot of different pieces of advice here. And I want to also know, I know you guys asked some other questions. I want to know, what do you guys think about some of the things we talked about? Um, what do you feel your next action step is going to be? You know, um, are you going to go talk to your crush? Are you going to talk to your parents about something that's bothering you? Are you going to so resolve things with your friends? What is on your mind right now? Are you going to work through your fears over about something? What's on your mind right now? And what do you feel um, you've taken away so far from what we've talked about? I'd love to get to know what you guys think. Um, so late in England, but I will watch this all. <laughs> J Ginger Jimmy, uh, Ginger Jimmy, thank you so much. I appreciate it. I know. Oh, I know it's late over in England. Um, thank you so much. I think it's like, what, 2 o'clock in the morning or something there? I don't even know what time it is. Uh, I think you guys are five hours ahead, but I really appreciate it, guys. Um, so let's see what we got here. So Ice Phoenix Gaming says, this girl is dating an eighth grader. Do you think I have a chance? I talk to her a lot. Um, so it's possible you do have a chance, but if she's dating an eighth grader, then she already is with someone. So I think it's possible that if she was single, you might have a chance. I don't really know. But because she's with someone right now, I think the best thing is to kind of let it be and not interfere. Um, gamers ZX, oh, gamers X 1014 says, how do I ask out my, how do I ask out my crush? Uh, how do I ask my crush out when she is always with her friend? So gamers, that's a really good question. I have a video on that exact topic. I did it fairly recently, how to talk to your crush in front of her friends. You know, we always look at the friends as being a barrier. We look at the friends as like, uh-oh, how do I start a conversation with this girl when she's always with her friends? The way I see it is that is that the friends present an opportunity, right? The friends are a way for you to start a conversation with everyone, right? And it becomes easier because all you need is one person to respond in the group. No. Sorry about that. If she's always with just one friend, you can ask them for their opinion on something. Hey, girls, um, hey, the two of you, I wanted to get two, two different opinions about something. And usually when you ask a question like that, you get one person to answer, the other person will answer too. So if you get your crush's friend to answer, then your crush will answer. And here's the thing. If you can show your crush's friend that you're a cool person to talk to and you're just fun to be around, she's going to tell your crush, hey, he's pretty cool. You know, you want that recommendation from her friends because that recommendation goes a long way. Okay. Okay, um, let's see what we got here. So Ragnar says, um, hey, Josh, another question. I don't want to spam, so I'll make this short question. Would it be wrong of me to be upfront and say, hey, I think you're cute? Uh, could, it, could, it, could, it, could infer your number? Oh, could you infer to get her number? Um, that's totally fine. Look. Um, sometimes the best way to go about things is to not beat around the bush, right? And that's the reality of it. To walk right up to a person you think is cute and say, listen, I think you're pretty cute. Uh, it's cool if I get your number so I can contact you sometimes. Sometimes that works. And I think everyone should operate to the level of their own confidence. If you feel confident enough to do that, try it out and see if it works. That's the best thing I think you could do. So X Sharpie, X... XSHQRP Minecraft PVP says hi. Hello. Okay, so um, Kingser Gaming says, I like this girl. Uh, she comes to my house a few times every two weeks or one. I like her friends. What I do to progress uh, to more, we can, we can touch each other over and stuff, but I don't know. Okay, so if you're trying to progress with a girl that you see from time to time, I have a video called How to Touch Your Crush, um, like this in the thumbnail. Um, and it's a funny, crazy looking thumbnail, but ideally I talk about that, how to escalate in touch, how to do it so that it's consensual and how to kind of have your crush feel comfortable and, and feel okay with you putting your arm around her or holding her hand. So definitely check out that video. It'd be super helpful. So the next question, I'm not going to say the name, but, um, it's a good question. What should I do if I'm scared of what my peers will think? So to this question, um, 
I think what I think what's important to recognize is that um, part of part of the fear of other people not accepting us is built in um, it's built in just our social structure, right? Like we're taught in society that we have to be accepted by everyone. Everyone has to like us. We have to strive for that. Um, but we're not ever taught that some people may not like us or some people may be indifferent or some people may really like us. You know, people are going to fall all over the spectrum there. Um, and a good way to not be scared of what people think about you is to recognize that people only can come from their own perceptions. Meaning, here's the thing. Have you ever walked down the street and saw someone that was maybe acting wild and you thought, oh, they're crazy? You don't know anything about them other than what you saw, right? You don't know, maybe they have a medical condition. Maybe they're really upset. Maybe they are actually crazy. Who knows? Maybe there's a million different possibilities. Um, but all you have to go by is this tiny sliver of window that you see, right? Now think about yourself. Imagine someone catches you on a bad day and they only see a tiny sliver of how you respond in that moment, right? You would naturally say, well, hold on a second. Just because I acted that way in those five minutes doesn't mean you know anything about me. There's a whole world of my personality there. I have so many interests. I have so many different types of relationships with people. I love books. There's so much depth to your personality beyond the little that people perceive. And that's why I think you shouldn't be scared of what your peers think because your peers don't always know the full story of you. And a lot of times they make their judgment calls on just the small window. So I think if you ever feel like people are judging you or people are saying things about you and they're saying you're this or you're that or you're not cool enough or whatever it is, try to always bring yourself back and recognize they don't know me. How can you dislike me if you don't truly know me? And that should help hopefully bring some level of solitude where you start to say, well, the best way for them to truly get to know me is for me to be open, to, for me to share, for me to learn about them as well. So, you know, if people are making fun of you, people are bullying you, or people are saying things, or you just don't feel good enough, recognize that people don't know the real you and they don't know the full you, you know? And be open to showing that so that they can get to learn you better and they can change their perceptions, right? Um, I know for me, when I was in high school, um, in the very beginning, I didn't really talk to anyone because I was nervous, right? And people thought I was a really quiet kid. But once I got comfortable, once I made friends and whatever it was, people were like, oh, wow, I thought you were quiet, but you're really not. You're pretty cool. And they only learned that because I opened up more. So the more you open up, the more you share about your personality, the more you talk with people one-to-one, -one, the better it is for them to get a well-rounded perspective of who you are. So I hope that was helpful in some way. Um, Ethan says, I was very scared if we don't get together, I want to date her in high school. So Ethan, yes, we talked about this. Um, if things don't work out now or you can't get close to her now, then try again later in high school. If that's your best bet and that's what you could do, go for it, man. Uh, Game Jaden says, everybody that's new to this, subscribe to Josh. He made me more confident and get a girlfriend with this good advice. Thank you, Jaden. I appreciate it, man. Jackson says, there's this girl I like and our parents are friends. How do we make it less awkward? Mm, that's a that's a good one. Uh, sometimes it's like ah, your parents know each other, and it's kind of weird, right? I, I get that. I, I see where you're coming from on that. Um, here's what I think. I think a good way to make it less awkward is to try to find a way to develop a relationship with that person outside of your friends, right? So let's say you only see them when their parents are around. Maybe their parents bring them around, and that's how you guys see each other when everyone's parents are together. Try to think of ways that you guys can talk online to each other privately without the parents, or you can maybe make plans to hang out and meet up and, and, and without the parents. You really want to form your own relationship without, that's not resting on your parents knowing each other. That's the best way to make it less awkward because that way it isn't contingent on the parents going, oh, my son is this, my daughter is this and stuff, and you guys have your own thing going. So Zagola, what's your situation? Rishi wants to know. Okay, Kane Gutierrez says, so my crush of five years says she's looking for a nice guy, which I am. I'm also shy, unfortunately. She always says hi to me and we often make eye contact. However, she always she talks to other guys a lot. Tips. Okay, so there's not much you can do in terms of her talking to other guys. If that's what she chooses to do and that's what she wants to do, that's totally fine. You know, people should always be open to talking to other people. That's how we find people that we can connect with. Um, 
So, but you mentioned something important here. She's been your crush for five years and she's looking for a nice guy, but you're shy. So for five years, you've known her, but you haven't really put your feelings on display. You haven't really asked her out. You haven't really talked to her in a romantic way. You haven't done any of that. So for five years, she's gotten to know you as this quiet, shy guy. And it's going to be very difficult for you to flip a switch and for her to go, oh, wow, he's really interesting because she's already built a persona of you. I think the best way to reboot, as we're talking about, to reboot her perception of you really comes down to you taking some time away from her. And I know that might sound counterproductive. You might say, well, hold on. How is taking time away from her going to help me get closer to her? But I think in the long run, it will. I think what you want to do is you want her to see the new you, to get to know you as a different person than how she has already gotten to know you, which is the shy, quiet guy. And the best way to do that is to take your time away from her. The less time you spend around her, the more time you could spend focusing on developing who it is you want to be in this world, which is super important. Um, yeah, so Rishi responded, uh, she friend on you, man, unless you're honest with her and confident with your opinion, you won't ever know. Yeah, I mean... You can try to ask her out, but like I said, you've built a persona that she's gotten to know, and it is going to be tough for her to kind of flip that and say, wow, you know, I thought you were my friend, and all, this, all of a sudden you liked me, you know? The Dark Chaos says, Josh, I love your videos. I have a crush on someone who won't give me a chance because I dated someone she knows. She says it'll be weird. What do I do? How do I change your thoughts about me? Okay, so you have a crush on someone who won't give you a chance because you dated someone she knows. Yeah, I mean, I could see how she would feel that could be weird. That happens from time to time. Um, people feel uncomfortable with the idea of, oh, you dated my friend. Like, that's going to be awkward. Um, the best thing you can do in that situation really is to keep on building your one-on-one -on -one connection with her. If you keep on flirting with her and you keep on joking and you keep on trying to hang out with her one-on-one, -on -one, eventually it might be something she moved past. She may not, but... Your best bet really is to keep building your connection with her. That's really the best thing I would say. Um, Damien says, Magazine, you sound like you have girl problems, but not college. It sounds like middle school problems. Damien, it's college, 19 plus. Um, look, people of all ages, I think, I think what's interesting is that developing human connections uh, is something that people at all ages face, right? Like I've talked to people who are 11 years old, 10 years old about those kind of things. And I've talked to people that were 50 years old and older. Let me give you guys a quick rundown. One time I did a uh, speaking event where this older woman who was in her 80s came to me and asked me how she can talk and communicate better with her husband. And I'm like, you're 80 years old. And she's like, yeah, but we don't really connect as much. So I tried talking to her about it. It's like human, human connection is something that we struggle with at all ages. So it doesn't matter if you're in college or middle school, wherever you may be. Um, we can all learn, I think, something from each other. So iHobo says, what's the best way to get a girl's number? Uh, I have quite a few videos on asking for the phone number, which might be helpful for you. I think the best way to get a girl's number um, would be to tie it to doing something together, right? So a good way to go about that would be, let's say you're talking to the girl and you say something like, oh man, the new Fast and the Furious movie came out. I I want to go check it out. You know, oh, you're a huge fan too. We should go check it out together. Tell you what, give me your number and I'll text you so we can organize plans to go check it out, right? So think about that for a second. You're talking about something you both like, both like Fast and the Furious. You're following up with, oh man, we should go check it out. So you're making plans. And then the third, you're saying, let me get your number so that we can make the plans to do something we both like, right? And now she's going to be like, of course, I'll give you my number so we can hang out and do something we both like. I think that's the best way. If you tie asking for the number into doing something, it makes it seem like you're going to contact them for a purpose rather than just give me your number, you know? So Jaden says, um, I have a girlfriend and this girl likes me. After I stop liking her in text, she gets mad in person. Uh, she likes to talk to me and play around any advice. So you have a girlfriend and this girl, it seems like this girl's flirting with you and gets mad in person. Um, so it sounds like this girl's flirting with you, even though you have a girlfriend. Um, if you feel like that makes you uncomfortable or you feel like it's being disrespectful to your girlfriend, it might be important to just tell her, hmm, to just tell her straight up and let her know, um, Hey, listen, you know, like, I feel like you're being rude to my girlfriend and it's not cool. I would hope we can keep a distance from each other. 
that may be important to say. Um, gamers, super chat, I forgot to put my message. Oh man, sorry about that, gamers. If you want, type it in here and I'll try my best to get to it. I apologize for that. Uh, thank you again for the super chat. I, I super appreciate it, man. It means a lot to me. It really does. Um, Emil Fagerberg says, there's this girl I really like, but I only have around a month to get to get her. I'm in ninth grade. Any tips are starting? Uh, yeah, so like I said, you know, the, the clock is winding down. School's coming to a close. You have a short window of time to really ask out your crush, right? So what do you do? Um, I think the most important thing is to, to step on it, man. Push the gas and go for it. Um, if you can... If you can start building a, a relationship with her now, you could start talking to her and building those small steps along the way. You can definitely build something in the next month or two. Um, but it has to start with you saying hello to her, talking to her, starting that conversation. It has to start there. Okay, cool. King Zur Gaming says, I like this girl. She's the same age as me, and we have known each other for since primary. We're good friends, and we can't touch we can touch each other, hands and stuff. She comes to my house and stuff sometimes. So it sounds to me like you two get along really well. What do you feel is holding you back from maybe going for a kiss or even just asking her either to date you or to be your girlfriend? What do you feel is really holding you back from doing that? Um, Brianna says, how do I ask a boy for, how do I ask for a boy's number? So that's a good question, Brianna. I think you should follow that same strategy. Um, try to find something that you two have in common and make plans to do that together. So let's say you love McDonald's, right? You love McDonald's, they love McDonald's, you can say, cool, let's get McDonald's one day after school. Let me get your number and I'll text you and we'll, we'll organize plans, we'll make plans then. Ty, asking for the number into doing something, I feel like it makes it easier and it doesn't make it awkward, you know? So close to mine, I beg you don't skip, Josh. All right, Sayed, uh, I hope I didn't skip. Um, but if I did, please post it again, sorry guys. All right, so Zagola says, I think you have two options, man. Uh, you can try to be a super fun guy to talk with her. Uh, oh, Rishi, Rishi is responding uh, to Zagola. You can try to be a super fun guy to talk with her and make yourself seem more cool and awesome and then her boyfriend or you can move on. Yeah, I mean, I think Rishi's on the money there. Um, so, so another question here. I have a question. What should I do if I'm scared of what my peers think? I have a good question. What should I do if I'm scared of what my peers think? Oh, so I answered the peers question before. I think what it really comes down to is recognizing that people don't have a full perspective of who you are, right? They don't know you to the extent that they should. Um, and the best way is to overcome that fear of what your peers will think is to be open with them, to share more information, to talk more to them. The more people know about you, the easier it is for them to get a better understanding of who you are. Damian Gray says, you're older than me, but I think you'll find that I've hooked with hotter girls than all of you combined. Possibly. <laughs> Um, Bill says, believe none of what you see. Believe none of what you see, guys. Um, so Ragnar says, so Josh, I thought of a way to open and say hi. So what if I say, hey, I think you're pretty cool. Could I infer your number? Ragnar, that could definitely work, man. Um, I totally think you should go for it. Uh, try it out. See if it works. Damien Gray says, I'm younger than you. That's cool, man. Um, someone reply. Let's see. So uh, CBA, to think of a name, says, uh, Josh, um, my crush is lesbian. Any tips, general advice? So if you know your crush is lesbian or, or your crush is gay or, or something along those lines, then I think maybe they have their choices mapped out, right? Meaning that they're probably not going to be interested in you. I don't think trying to find a way to flip people if they're not sexually attracted to that gender uh, is a good thing to take. I think it, it's similar somewhat to liking someone who has a boyfriend. You know, if if she's a lesbian and she likes another girl, take that as, hey, she's just generally not interested in boys. So I would move on from that. I know maybe that's not the advice you want to hear, but I think that's the most respectful thing to do. Kayla Stott says, hi. Hello, Kayla. Damien Gray. Oh my God. All right, cool. Let's get through these questions. Let's see. Uh, Ginger, Jimmy says, is your newsletter free? Also, can I read it online instead of it being sent? Um, so the newsletter, I'm kind of retooling that. Um, I'm going to try to shape that into be more focused on, that's going to go more to like teachers and parents. Um, but with the newsletter, I might develop something just for core followers and stuff. But for now, you can follow me on social media. That's probably the best way to kind of see what I'm doing and follow up. So 
for example, on Instagram, I just posted a picture today of me and uh, uh, two kids that I went to their middle school and they helped me out the whole day and they were kind of walking me to classes, showing me where everything was. Um, so I posted over on there. So if you follow my Instagram, you'll be able to follow up with what I'm doing day to day. Okay. So another question says here, my friends are always around me, so I can't talk to her one-on-one -on -one without my friends asking why I wanted to talk to her. So sometimes friends can butt their heads in in the wrong places, right? They're always like, what are you doing? Do you like her? What are you doing? Um, the best thing is to kind of let them know what your plan is, right? Because sometimes it's like, Friends will try to troll you just because they can, but if they know that you have a very strict plan, I mean, they might try to troll you harder, but you have a better bet of getting them to kind of back off a little bit by simply telling them, hey guys, look, give me 15 minutes to talk to her one-on-one, -on -one, and then, then you guys can do whatever and say whatever you want. Try establishing that grounds with them and see what they say. So King Zur Gaming says, um, I like this girl, she's the same age as me, and we have known each other since primary primary school. We're good friends. We can touch each other. Uh, she comes to my house and stuff. So King Zer, so I kind of addressed this earlier. I was asking, um, uh, what do you feel is holding you back from maybe asking her out? It sounds like you two connect really well. Do you feel like you've known her for so long that it'd be weird for you to maybe go for a kiss or ask her out? Um, Ice Phoenix Gaming says, this girl is dating an eighth grader. Do you think I have a chance to talk to her a lot? We're afraid to talk to each other. So yeah, um, like I said, if, if the girl is already dating someone, I think the most you can strive for is to be friends with her in that moment, be develop a friendship, and then let it be. You know, if if she breaks up with him, then you could step in. But I would not interfere with someone's relationship as they're dating someone. Um, Jaden asked, how do you keep a conversation going if the girl asks you out somewhere? So uh, Jaden, that's a really good question. I think, uh, so that's why I said I'm, I'm working on putting together this icebreaker conversation kind of document for you guys to check out. And it's going to be listing of all these different icebreaker conversations, how to segue, what are good follow-up questions, what to say if the, the her response or his response is, um, I don't know, what's a good way to follow up so it doesn't die. I'm putting that together, so that should be out soon. But I do have a video called Five Ways to Keep a Conversation Going, which would be super helpful. And you can check that out and think you'd like it. Okay. Gamers says, hey, Josh, how do I build up the confidence to ask her my question? She's always with her friend. So I kind of shared that information earlier. I think maybe you guys might be repeating some of them because I'm way behind on the chat. So I apologize for that. Um, but the build up the confidence to ask her out in front of her friend, I think you don't have to ask her out in front of her friend. But um, what I would recommend doing is being comfortable talking to her in front of her friend. Because once you show the friend that, hey, you're cool and the friend is okay with you, you can always say to the friend, hey, is it cool if me and my crush kind of go over here for a second and talk? And if the friend thinks you're okay, they're going to say, yeah, sure, whatever, go talk to them. And that's when you ask them out, when you separate them. So Dipsy Marrow says, hey, Josh, so there is this one girl from my class. I like her. She likes me, but my friends think she's ugly, fat, and more bad things. How do I keep it a secret from them? We never really talk, so can you help? Okay. That's interesting. So you like this girl, but your friends are kind of being jerks, right? Let's be honest here. They're being jerks. Um, if you like her, that's what matters. You know, like your friends don't have to date her if they don't like her. You know, that's on them. They don't have to date her. Um, but if you like her, then the best that they can do is at least show you the respect of not making fun of her. Uh, especially if you start going out with her, like you're not going to want to be around friends that are just going to make fun of the girl you like or are going to attack the girl you like, right? So I don't think you should worry about keeping it a secret. I think you should let them know that since you like her, that, you know, it's okay to come to her defense and to tell them, hey guys, like stop that, you know, don't make fun of her. That's not cool. Um, and I know they're your friends, but it's okay to draw the line somewhere and let them know this is not cool, you know? So I would say do that. Uh, Brianna, how do I get a guy's phone number? So just like I said um, before, best thing to do is to tie asking for the phone number into making plans with them. Say, hey, have you seen the new Fast and the Furious movie? You want to go check it out? Cool. Let me get your phone number and I'll text you and we'll try to figure out a day to meet up. Cool. So Ice Phoenix Gaming says this girl's dating eighth grader. Okay. So I mentioned, I answered that one already. Um, Crazy CRK says, what do I do if I want to ask my crush out, but I'm scared because I don't want it to be awkward. So dude, I totally get where you're coming from. Um, you don't want it, you don't want to get it to, you don't want to get it to, sorry, you don't want it to be awkward. 
Um, and the best way to make it not awkward, I think, is you have to develop some kind of a friendship or a relationship with her first. Don't just sometimes jump into asking around if you don't feel comfortable with that. Try to first build rapport. And what rapport is, is it's building a connection where a person can grow to trust you, right? So when she sees you, she could say hi to you and she's not feeling awkward about it. When you see her, you can ask for her opinion on something you don't feel awkward. Focus on those initial steps before you ask her out because if you build that groundwork, then when you do get to ask her out, it's not gonna be out of place. All right, um, you have to go. Smiley, thank you so much for being a part of this, man. I really appreciate it. Your questions were super helpful. Hopefully my advice were, was helpful too. Um, I think your questions are really on the nail, man. And hopefully people um, uh, learn something from them. Okay. So Damien says, you're trying to get him. That's, that's a reach. You have to steal lines from Michelle Obama's speech. <laughs> I'm so confused. I feel like the chat has a life of its own, and I'm just, I'm just out of the mix here. Jackson says, there's this girl I like and our parents are friends. How do we make it less awkward? So yeah, so Jackson, I kind of shared that. I, I'm probably going to do, I'll probably do a video on that. I think that's an important topic. Um, how to deal with like parents being friends with each other. I think in a simple case like that, you want to try to develop your own personal relationship with her or him. Uh, the girl, you want to develop your relationship with her outside of the parents. So whether that's talking to her online or making plans to hang out with her one-on-one -on -one outside of the parents realm. So Tommy says, I'm really shy and I can barely make friends and even just talking to people in general. How do I approach knuckles like a creep? So Tommy, I answered that a little bit earlier. Hopefully you're around uh, for that. Stick, you stuck around for my answer. Liberty Gaming says, I like this one girl. Sometimes she smiles at me. She looks at me a lot. She also saw my yearbook with her nicest handwriting, but we aren't going to be in the same class next year. What should I do? Curses. Um, so... If you're in a situation like that where it sounds like you guys are somewhat interested in at least talking to each other, I think the best thing is to, if you're not going to see her next year, try to find a way to contact her, um, if, especially if you're not in the same class. Maybe she's still in your school, but try to get her contact information. Try to see if you can talk to her on Snapchat and um, see if you guys can maybe meet up during lunch and hang out or see if you can hang out one day after school. Keep the conversation going. Don't let it fall flat because if you stop interacting with her, even if it's just online, you need some kind of interaction. You like, she may just lose interest altogether. So uh, Emil uh, says, there's this girl I really like, but I only have around a month. So Emil, I answered that question earlier. Hopefully, uh, yeah, I'm gonna make Rishi Manga mod because he's being super helpful. Appreciate it. Uh, NHL says, uh, the girl, the girls in my class think they saw me uh, look in the bathroom and now I'm labeled the pervert. What do I do? Hmm, that's a tough one, man. Um, so it sounds like, I don't know if it's true or not, but let's assume for the sake of being, it's it's a rumor that happened. Um, so what was the goal of saying that got him banned? So I see Zagola wrote, Josh, what time is it where you are? And Zagola was banned. I don't think that's worthy of banning. I, I don't know what he said that got him banned, but try not to ban people unless they're really just being vulgar in the chat. You know, people are repeating questions, let them know, but try not to ban if it's not necessary, you know? Um, so the girls in my class think you saw in the bathroom. Oh, okay, back to the bathroom, pervert question. Um, the best thing to do is to talk to them. Um, like whenever, when it comes to ever comes to a rumor type of situation like that, like you really got to do damage control person by person, right? So talk to people one-on-one, -on -one. talk to every girl that you know and say, listen, you know, I'm not that kind of person. You know, I'm the, not the kind of person that would do that. You know, I want you to still trust me in some way. What, what do I have to do to regain that trust and be open and honest with those people, but it's going to be a one-to-one -one basis. So it can be very overwhelming. You may feel like, oh my God, everyone thinks this, but focus on people one by one and talking to them. Um, Deluxe Nick says, my crush gives me hugs when I do her a favor. The only problem is that I don't talk to her a lot because I'm a shy person. I asked to hang out with her, but she ignores the text. What should I do? So Deluxe Nick, Deluxe Nick, it sounds to me like she might be using you a little bit. Um, if she's giving you hugs when you do her a favor and then she just doesn't talk to you outside, it sounds like she's just giving you a hug whenever you just do something, right? And the last thing you want to be is kind of a dancing monkey. Um, so if she asks you to do something for her, just say, oh, I'm kind of busy right now. Ask someone else. Um, and don't stop doing things for her. I mean, not don't stop, but just stop doing things for her and 
let her see that, hey, if you're not going to talk to me, at least on a friendly level, then I'm not going to help you. I'm not going to go out of my way to help you just for a hug. It's like, you're worth more than that. You should know that, you know? Um, so Brianna says, I want to give some advice to my friend that got rejected because he is bisexual. What can I do? So Brianna, that's a good question. Um, so if he's bisexual and he got rejected, um, like I said, I think it's important to be there for your friends when they're kind of dealing with the rejection. Um, rejection sucks, right? And it can hurt sometimes. It can make you feel like you're not worth anything. It can make you feel like you're ugly or all these different things. The best thing you can do as a friend is to let them know that you're there to listen. You're there to talk. You're there not to talk, but you're there to listen, to hear what they have to say. Um, and maybe keep an eye out. You know, at the end of the day, keep an eye out and see if you can match them up with someone or introduce them to someone or help get their mind off that person by talking to someone new. You know, that's what I would recommend. But keep letting them know, hey, listen, I'm here for you. I'm here to talk and listen whenever you need me so that they don't feel alone. Because when you're rejected, you can feel super alone and no one wants to be in that boat. All right. So we got a few more minutes here. I'm going to try to get through questions a little bit quicker. Um, just let me quite go back to this, um, to anyone who's catching the tail end of the YouTube hangout. Um, this is spring break Q and a, we're answering questions. We're kind of just rebooting our mindset, thinking of new ways to do things. Um, if you aren't already follow me on Instagram and Snapchat, my username is at the Josh speaks. Um, I post on Snapchat and Instagram every single day. Pretty much. I post a daily quote. Whoop post a daily quote from my calendar here every day it's a daily motivational quote and I give you guys a goal to follow for the day and I also post a new toy every single day if you guys have ever seen my videos I have the huge shelf of toys behind me and I always kind of just show off what I have so if you follow me over on snapchat or Instagram you'll see piece by piece my toy collection and a daily quote we just do a lot of fun things over there on snapchat and Instagram so make sure to go follow me um, let's get back into the questions. So, uh, and also if you haven't already hit the thumbs up on this, uh, on this, uh, live stream, you know, I really appreciate, um, all the support you guys give me in helping the channel grow. It means a lot. And I want to start doing more for you guys. Um, I'm going to start testing something out soon. Um, and it's going to be on, I might as well tell you guys. So I'm planning on doing a thing called office hours, right? And office hours are going to be every Sunday. I'm not sure what time I'm thinking around noon or maybe early. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump on for about 30 minutes and I'm just going to boom, answer questions for the office hours. And we're going to start preparing topics for me to talk about during the week. So in those chats is how I'm going to determine what I'm going to talk about for the week. Something new I want to try out. I want to start putting more content on my channel too. And I feel like that's a cool third video I could start doing. So I haven't worked out all the details yet, but I'm going to. Sounds like a lot of messages were deleted by Damien Gray. Um, Damien Gray, why are you deleting all these messages? Are they repeats? Is that what it is? It doesn't look like a lot of them are repeats. Um, Damien, I'm going to have to take you off as mod. Um, yeah, my username is the Josh Speaks. Let's see, manage moderators. Damien, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to take you off, man. It seems like you're just blocking a lot of comments that are just normal comments. So I'm not sure why. But let me just, oh, let me go back into the chat here. Um, okay, Zishan Saeed um, says, uh, there's this girl in my class who has flirted with me before but does occasionally smile um, when she talks to me and we don't actually hang out. Should I start talking to her? She's more popular than me. Okay, that's a good question. So there's a girl in your class who flirted with you before, but does occasionally smile when she talks to you. We don't hang out. So it sounds to me like she's smiled. She's, you know, talked to you here and there. Um, but it isn't quite clear where you guys stand. And I can understand where that's coming, where you're coming from on that. Um, it sounds to me like the best thing to do is to ask her to hang out. I mean, let's think about it. The more you get to know her, the easier it'll be for you to kind of start seeing if you guys connect, right? So I would say just start talking to her, hang out with her. So Dark Chaos says, I keep saying the same thing, uh, but how do I get my crush to see me in a new light? She says she won't date me because I dated someone she knows She knows my ex, how to change her mind. So look, Dark Chaos, uh, best thing to do um, 
is you have to you have to get her to see your personality personality more right she may hold on to this idea of like no it's weird you dated my friend um but if she can develop her own unique bond with you that might be enough but like i said at the end of the day she may just stick to her guns and decide no you dated my friend that's that okay jxfk says how to ask my crush to the semi-formal she talks to me all the time she's not talking to her friends uh now recently she's been talking to me more okay so how to ask your crush to the semi-formal i have a few videos on that um not so much semi-formal but how to ask your crush out to homecoming how to ask your crush out to prom definitely check out those two videos i think they i i kind of talk a lot about the idea of asking someone to a dance like that um and that might be the solution there she talks to you all the time she's not talking to her friends um so like i said check out those two videos i'm gonna scroll down guys i'm sorry um i'm sorry if i'm missing some of your questions i'm trying to scroll down to the most recent comment since we're coming to the end here hey josh uh, uh, it just jumped to the end um so here's the thing guys if i skipped over your questions uh i apologize and i didn't get to answer them i apologize again um what i do want to say is this i'm gonna answer one more question and like I said, if you guys want to get your question in the last second, you can always use the super chat function. I will definitely answer super chat questions. Um, but uh, I'll, answer, I'll just pick, when I finish talking, I'll just pick the last question here. Um, so what I would say is this, is that I hope the things we talked about today were super helpful in some way. And I don't want you to just kind of hear what I said in the hangout or hear what people are writing back and say like, okay, cool, that's it, go on my day sit with the knowledge, sit with the things we've talked about this weekend, sit on them, think about them and be ready guys, be ready to act on them on Monday. I want as many of you to follow me as many as you can follow me on Snapchat or follow me on Instagram and let me know Monday, let me know what's going on. Like if we talked about you talking to your crush, if we talked about you helping your friends or being a better driver or, um, dealing with the friend zone whatever it is come monday i want you guys to start acting on it you know spring break as far as we know it mentally is over it's time to jump back in the game and we're going to do it together i'm here with you guys i'm here to help you out okay let's answer the last question and then we're going to wrap this up okay last question will be here daniel phillips says i really like this girl she is decently popular i used to help her in science class but we don't sit together i don't know what to say to her all right so that's a good question daniel um it seems like she's a popular girl and you guys sort of know each other um but you don't sit together so i'll tell you a quick story so when i was in college there was a girl that was in my science class right uh, my science lecture class and um she was gorgeous like beautiful girl and i was too nervous to talk to her um i had had very very brief conversations like oh when i saw her it's like oh oh oh, sorry move over you know those kind of like awkward moments where you have to talk to each other but no real conversations and eventually some guy came right in sat next to her in the class and introduced himself and started talking to her eventually they started going out and i sat behind her so i watched every single day as they hung out and stuff and were going out and it sucked. It's like, ah, uh, all I had to do was start talking to her, find a way to talk to her. So in your situation, Daniel, um, even if you guys don't sit together, right? Approach her and talk to her, get back in the habit of doing that. You, you said yourself, you used to help her in science class. And now is your opportunity again. If you see her in class to talk to her at the beginning or at the end of class, ask her how she's been ask her if she's still struggling with science ask her about herself don't miss that opportunity take it if it's there in front of you because you don't want to end up missing the opportunity like i did and then sitting there going wow that sucks that i missed it all i had to do was talk to her you know okay guys all right now i'm just gonna let the chat run so it's gonna flow I'm at the bottom here um my comments are being deleted. Yeah, so the person who I put as the mod was deleting random comments. I really apologize, guys. I don't know why he was doing that. Um, I took him off his mod. It was really weird, but... Um, Zishan says, it's me again. I don't have enough characters. It's like asking to hang out. It'd be weird asking her, you know? I hear you, man. All right, guys, on that note, I want to wrap it up. I'm going to flash it one more time because why the heck not? 
Um, this is my snap code. If you guys want to take a screenshot, you can follow me over on Snapchat. Awkward right now. Anyway, um, you can follow me over on Snapchat. And like I said, guys, spring break is over. See it as we're getting back into our lives. We're getting back into the groove of things. Some of you guys said, you know, you're finishing school soon and you got to, you know, you want to act on things quickly. So let's do it. Let's put things into play. Um, it's still, let's, let's put things into play. Let's, let's help each other out. You know, um, follow me over on Snapchat, follow me over on Instagram and let's talk guys, uh, to everyone that sent their super chats. Thank you guys so much. I truly appreciate it. And to everyone here that asked the question, I thank you guys so much. It really means a lot to me that you guys are willing to spend your Friday night jumping on this hangout with me. Truly appreciate it. Um, at the end of this video, I'm going to kind of put up my most recent video and a subscribe function. So if you're not subscribed to my channel already, do so. And if you want to know the next time I go live or next time I put up a new video, hit the little hit the little bell icon. That's going to turn on notifications. I do have a Twitter too. I didn't even mention Twitter. I'm on Twitter as well. If you guys are big on Twitter, I'm at the Josh Speaks on Twitter as well and Facebook. But Snapchat and Instagram are like to go to, but I'm on Twitter. I'm on Facebook. I'm on all those programs. Um, Definitely message me, guys. I'm always available to talk one-on-one. -on -one. My goal is to help you learn how to be your best self. And whether that's doing it through videos or talking to you guys one-on-one -on -one or speaking in your school or writing a book for you, whatever it is, that's what I'm going to dedicate my life to do. And I'm here to help you guys. Thank you so much for being a part of this spring break Q&A hangout. Like I said, come Monday morning, we're putting things into play. I'll talk to you guys sometime soon. All right. As always, love and peace. I'll see you guys around.